scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It's important to pay attention to the progressions, the things that are happening in your spirit. Listen, Paul speaking to Timothy, he told him, he said, meditate on these things number one number two he said give yourself wholly commit yourself without reservation he said to the end that your profiting will not just appear to you alone but will appear to all God wants men to see your profiting. God wants men to know that your coming every Friday is not a waste. God wants to prove a point with your life to those who think it is a waste to yield yourself to spiritual things. And he said, here's the secret. Meditate on these things. He said, give yourself holy. And he leaves you with a promise. He said, you're profiting. The benefit of what the Holy Ghost can do in the life of a man the benefit of a transformed mind, the benefit of an anointed life will be evident, indisputable. The Bible says that when Peter healed the man at the gate, beautiful, the people wanted to contend, but the Bible says they could not argue because a notable miracle, notable, the end of every strife, the end of every contention is when there is a performance when there is result i'm not talking about one time result god does not just give you result he gives you the capacity to reproduce it satan notwithstanding this is what authority is authority is the capacity to reign in the day rain in the night rain in the desert rain in the river rain on the mountain is a rule down Satan notwithstanding. I always quote this scripture. The Bible says, How awe inspiring are your ways? He said, Through the greatness of thy power will thy enemies submit themselves to you. Not through grammar, not through stories, through the greatness. This is why it's important. The Bible says, Submit yourself unto God. Then he says, resist the devil and he will flee. It is a first submit yourself. This is the secret of victory in life. You're manifesting the character of the spirit. You're manifesting the anointing of the spirit. You're manifesting the wisdom of the spirit. They looked at Jesus and said, what wisdom is this? Listen. When the Spirit of God takes hold of your life, you will do things that will scare you. You will see no mountain before you, no challenge. When men said it cannot be done, you will shatter barriers and walk as if Satan does not exist. This is the spirit of faith I want you to get. Hallelujah. One minute, lift your hands and pray and say, Lord, I know you can do more with me than you have done so far. Please use me. Do more with me. Pray. Say, Lord, I avail myself. Do more. Do more. I may not be an orator, 
but do something with me. I may be suffering from complex, but if you can ever do anything with me, I'm available. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone tonight. This is Koinonia. May God bless you. Walk up to 10 people. Give them a spirit-filled hug. Tell them it's good to see you. Look at their faces, please. Make sure you love them. Be genuine about it. Don't tell lies. They know when you are lying. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you. Be seated. It's good to have everyone around. It's always a blessing. I want to use this opportunity to say thank you, especially to those of you outside. I know what it means. Those inside, can you appreciate those outside? Honestly, celebrate. Them. Hallelujah. a genuine hunger for God for you to come and find out sometimes that there are no seats and you tell yourself I won't deceive myself hallelujah there are many people who come for meetings and find out there's no seat there's no nothing they say let's go back and they carry their trouble their mindsets and go back and remain where they are it takes a level of desperation the woman said to herself if I may but touch the hem of his garment she was determined Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's good to have everyone around. I bless God for what he's doing in this place. And I hope you have the grace to see and celebrate when you see God doing great things. Not just by clapping, but telling him thank you. I always tell people, if I had the opportunity to receive what some of us are receiving free of charge without paying for it, I assure you, I would have been ten times better than I am right now. Hallelujah. What some of you are getting at a platter of gold came under tears, blood, fastings, persecutions that you cannot imagine. I hope that you will value it. Hallelujah. The beauty of leadership is that you reduce the journey for others. If it took me 10 years to get to this level, I should shorten your journey to take two years. This is how you multiply your success. That's why we are giving everything without hiding. But the Bible says, do not cast your pearl before swine. We are not asking you to pay for it. We are only asking you to value it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Among the many things that we thank God for doing in our midst, uh, four major things, I call them our core values. And I've preached this for years. It's important to know what you, we want you to become. When you enter a university system, for instance, you are given an idea of what you will become at the end of your program. Hallelujah. In the corporate world, we call it the law of clarity. When you state very clearly the things that you want, you give people the mental picture of what you believe they would become. Hallelujah. And we seek to do four major things in this place. Number one, to communicate the love of Jesus. That everyone who comes out from among us, the first thing we want the world to see in your life is not power, it's not healing, it's love that comes with the presence of God. Write it. That's our number one core value, love. Love. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, not when you are called apostle or prophet. Love. Love is a symbol of God's presence. It's a symbol of maturity in the spirit. Number two, character. What we seek to impart in you is character. Character. Hallelujah. Not only do we want people who have the love of God in them, but men and women who are furnished, like Prof said, character. That's the second core value that we have in this place. Everything we do 
is around these decisions. Number three, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the place of the anointing. We believe that without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible for you to really be transformed and be equipped and to face the pressures and the challenges of life and establish the kingdom of heaven here in the earth. So the anointing. Number four, excellence. It's our job not just to make anointed and careless and non-challenged people like we have in our society. Anointed men of God who are careless, non-challenged, but we want people who are excellent. Say after me, excellence. It's my heart desire every time I pray for you. I pray these four things. And I say, Lord, put upon your people the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. Where you become so skilled, you become so competent. And you notice that all the messages that we preach are centered around and honor these core values. Hallelujah. We are not confused about what we want you to become. We are not just guessing. Uh, 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 uh. It's a map. Are you listening to me? We are following a definite blueprint. There is a spiritual curriculum we are following. If we follow it diligently, you will become it at the end. This is called vision. Hallelujah. For the Bible says, write the vision. He said what? Make it plain. That's what I'm doing right now. I do it all the time. So that you know, as I'm coming for Koinonia, I'm not just going to church. See it like a school. See it like a training ground. If someone asks you, okay, so what are you going to achieve at the end of two or three years or four years? If you cannot tell them the end of it, you've been wasting your time. Please go and sleep. Hallelujah. You should know what you will become so that you can expect it and you can track your progress. Are you listening to me? So that when it is raining, for instance, and you come outside and you have to stand in the rain, you say, rain, you can follow me. This principle I'm learning will make this be the last time that this rain will ever fall on me. It's better for it to fall on you once than to fall on you forever because of not listening. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, they know not, neither do they understand. They said they grope in darkness and as a result, the earth is out of course. Say, but have I not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High? He said, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. And so you must understand that when it comes to hearing the word of God, keep the issue of luxury aside. Hello? Can you hear me inside and outside? Keep that issue of is there fan? Is there AC? We believe in excellence, but you must realize that you are a general on training. Are you listening to me? And nobody who is trained, the Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with activities of civilians. It will cost you. It will cost you your transport. It will cost you tears. I will shout at you. I will rebuke you. You will not like me, but I won't stop until something, hallelujah, comes out of your destiny. Praise the Lord. So core value number one, help me. Number one, this is what we want you to become. Number two, character number three the anointing we believe in the ministry of the holy spirit don't just say it's for them number four excellence say after me excellence very important thank you jesus for what you are doing we thank you for the gift of vision and we thank you because we can structurally build people and make them wonders even like david in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord all right bring out something to write please stop bringing can i have this buy something like this hallelujah please buy a very good notebook that no matter how careless you are you won't tear it around so that you can document some of these things Hallelujah. Many of you are always writing. 
But when we say write, you just search your pocket and check and bring out one paper that you wrote list to go to the you won't whatever you do not value, you won't attract to your life. Hallelujah. Whatever you dishonor repels you. Praise God. Write the following words down. Thank you, Jesus. Number one, mediocrity. Write the following words down. One, mediocrity. What does it mean to be a mediocre? It means to be ordinary. It means to be of moderate quality. To be of moderate quality. Another definition. Mediocrity means it's neither good nor bad. It's not spectacular, but it's not wrong anyway. Barely adequate. Barely adequate. Common. Inferior. These are the words that describe what it means to live in mediocrity or to be a mediocre. I'll come again because I want you to get it. Hallelujah. You see, let me teach you something. We're going to teach it in the Bible school. It's called homiletics. That's the theological name. The art of preaching. Repent from this jargon kind of preaching that people do. No, 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 no. And people are nodding. You are not getting anything. At the end of it, what did you get? You are not being changed. If that's how your lecturer teaches you, I assure you, you will never graduate. See, the goal of teaching, I'm not preaching. Are you listening to me? To preach means to declare. To teach means to explain. There is a difference. Preaching gives you knowledge. Teaching gives you understanding. The word of God is taught. The gospel is preached. So, for many of you who just go, nah, 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 you're just rapping and ranting. Uh -uh, calm down. Are the people following? If you leave the people more confused, you ended up wasting their time and their destinies. Hallelujah. That's why I'm taking it slowly because I really want you to get this. Have you written the first word? So, what does it mean? Ordinary, of moderate quality. Write down the second word indifference indifference those of you outside the lord will bless you i'm seeing you from here and i'm telling you my see i look forward to a big auditorium mighty auditorium where there will be light everywhere and those of you who are doubting will not be there oh yes that's what they told that's what he told he said you will see it but you eat of it when prof was saying, ah, one of the best institutes, some of you are saying, ah, really? It's not your fault, you're a student. When we're done with you, we'll kick out that mindset in Jesus' name. So write quickly, indifference. It means lack of interest. Please take note of that word. We'll be discussing it seriously today. Lack of interest. Number two, it means lack of concern. Lack of sympathy. Lack of interest. Lack of concern. Lack of sympathy. Another word, nonchalance. I mean, another definition of indifference. Nonchalance. Nonchalance. It's what Nigerians call, I don't care attitude. Don't write that. Don't write that. You're a leader. Don't write that. I'm just helping you understand. Say, I'm a leader. Say it, I'm a, I'm a leader. Indifference. The third word, excellence. Write down this word, excellence. What does it mean? The quality of being unusually good. The quality of being unusually good. The quality of being unusually good. The quality of having superior merit. 
to be of superior merit being exceptional surpassing ordinary standards i like that surpassing ordinary standards that's what it means to be excellent surpassing ordinary standards being extraordinary in other words above the ordinary possessing the highest or finest quality excellence write down the last word change c-h-a-n-g-e change it means to transform or to convert change change means to transform it means to convert it means to become different or to undergo an alteration change means to become different or undergo an alteration to be altered thank you jesus hallelujah now our discussion tonight is going to be around these four words and please i pray with all my heart and i'm still praying to god as i'm standing here that within these few minutes i will wrestle something in your mind and shake out anything that is not of god and if you believe that say amen, amen. hallelujah i'm teaching tonight on dominion through excellence dominion through excellence dominion through excellence the greatest enemy that i found in my life and from the word of god the greatest enemy of excellence is an attitude of indifference the greatest hindrance the greatest enemy to a life of excellence is indifference hallelujah and now look up please everybody now you can look up let me teach you why when you examine the body of christ you find out that we covered a bit of that in our full gospel series you can get the teachings very important but you find out that in the body of christ there is an emphasis on what i want to call the spiritual side of life hallelujah every sunday you just stand on the road and you see people moving from place to place ask them where am i going to say church say for what say to worship what does that mean i don't know and they are moving and so you have people who are moving from one place to the other and suddenly when two people are gisting when they step into church they stop talking they assume uh what do we call it now an attitude a sacred attitude and they sit down and now the pastor sits down and just discusses and then just gets up and changes his form and comes up and begins to preach and talk and everybody just sits down and behaves himself then we end the service by sharing the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god be with us now and forevermore amen and everybody resumes to what they want to call what their normal lives hallelujah and now the tragedy that has happened in the body of christ is that we have taught because of certain revelations like the favor of god the sovereignty of god the mercy of god um destiny help us you know powerful teachings like this we have had a lot of emphasis on these teachings and it has really not helped the body in some measures because it has brought people to a point where certain things like competence 
Certain things like excellence, certain things like diligence, certain things like determination, certain things like knowledge, study, um, hard work, and so on and so forth is no longer respected. Hallelujah. Why should I be diligent when overnight God can give me houses I did not build? Hallelujah. Why should I be diligent when I can just sit down and I can't speak English? But then I can find myself in, in the television ministry and I can heal the sick. Hallelujah. Why should I be excellent? And you know, the sad thing is this. Let me tell you where that error came from. Many men of God left everything to go into a genuine pursuit for God. Are you listening to me? They cut themselves away from society. The Bible says through desire, Proverbs 18 verse 1, a man having separated himself, he said, he intermeddled with all wisdom. And so, in the course of the sacrifice to get the anointing, you hear people talk of 100 days of prayer and fasting, 1 year, 2 years, 10 years, like Paul in the wilderness of Arabia, and so on and so forth. Now, when ministers get the anointing, listen to me, and then they also have character. When they come up, they find out that, ah, uh -uh, you know, People are coming. There are crowds coming because people have needs. And if you can meet that need, you become a magnet. People will keep coming. Hallelujah. They can criticize you, but they will still come. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? But then, that's not the issue. The major issue is that when that begins to happen, now the man of God begins to talk and he tells the people, I didn't read any book. I didn't study anything. I didn't learn anything. All I did was what? I pursued God and I prayed. And out of that, I built an excellent ministry. Correct? Now, that's not wrong. Because that's how he came. But then, the danger is, if he does not contend for higher knowledge in the realm of the spirit, he will begin to model a portrait of how he got to the position he was and begin to teach people. Are you listening to me? He begins to tell people, look, all these books, they are jargons. Just forget about it. And now you have a church that is anointed. Excellent man of God, but is a bad leader. Are you listening to me? Wonderful person. But you find out that there are all kinds of cases. They don't know who keeps the offering in the church. The pastor collects 100,000 offering. He kept it in his drawer. Later he came and found 10,000. He said, who carried it? Because he does not know that there are principles of corporate financing, for instance. And he doesn't see the need for it. Are you listening to me? Now, he knows that people are coming. But he forgets that the people are human beings. Only because they want the anointing so they can stand. He said, let, let them keep standing. If they really want to be blessed. After all, in the days of Ketrin Kuman, people waited from this to this. So, certain principles, listen to me, that can prepare us to contend with our society and the 21st century is not taught and built in people. Are you listening to me? And people have been taught that when you follow certain principles of life and success and achievement and the rest, it is you are reducing your spiritual journey. So they tell people, forget it. All that is there is fast and pray. I assure you, once you can kick away Satan, your destiny will open. Now the people go through every deliverance. They pray in tongues for years and they find out that this equation is not adding up. Are you listening to me? And tonight I want to help us that there is an aspect of dominion that can only happen through excellence. Praise the Lord. Dominion through excellence. Jesus gave us a command. What we call the great commission. Unfortunately, the message of the Great Commission, even by many evangelists, have been misunderstood. Because Jesus gave us a commandment. He said, go ye into all the world. You can get our teaching, conquering cosmos. The word there is cosmos. The word there is not just two people sitting down who are drinking. Go into all the social system, the strata and the sphere of society. I told you that the gospel is not just a message. The gospel is a value system. 
are you listening to me the gospel is not just a message it's an ideology it's a value system that seeks to enthrone jesus and his principles and his culture first in your life and across every sphere of influence are you understanding me this is the gospel jesus left when jesus walked upon the earth he affected people and society the reason why our gospel is powerless is because number one we do not understand the great commission number two we do not understand the components that make the great commission work number three we we are not interested to pay the price and make sure that we have those components working in our lives say amen so there is a place for anointing there is a place for prayer there is a place for fasting there is a place for knowledge there is a place for wisdom there is a place for excellence there is a place for character see the truths in the bible were not supposed to substitute one another they were supposed to complement one another when you begin to substitute one truth with another you are going to land into error the truth of god's word where if it is in the bible it was not meant to substitute another it was meant to complement Hallelujah. So we have a society that cannot match the challenges that come. And the, the terrible thing about it, listen to me, listen to me, is that many of our mentors and our fathers and our leaders and our role models have not created a true picture of leadership. They have only created a true picture of pastoral ministry. Are you listening to me? So you see someone who God is calling into the area of business behaving like a pastor. Because that's all he has seen and learned. Are you listening to me? And we tell people that progress in the spirit is when you become a pastor. Wrong. Wrong. God's idea was not to raise pastors. I hope you understand that the fivefold ministry was not God's original agenda. It came as a result of the fall of man. So he had to give gifts to men. Ephesians 4 from verse 10 to 12. The Bible says when he led captivity captive, he gave gifts to men. Some first apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors. And they have an assignment for the equipping of the saints. That they the saints will come to a point of maturity and do the work of the ministry. What is the work of the ministry? The great commission invade cosmos with the value system of heaven there are many christians who are born again but they have not been taught that the message that jesus brought was not a religious message he came with an ideology he came with a value system that means if you embrace jesus and his message and his principles you should become something hallelujah predictable Unfortunately, what we teach in church is potent enough to raise people from wheelchairs, but not potent enough to produce leaders and produce champions and world changers, men and women who can take charge of society. So we have the church there healing the sick and raising people from crutches. Wonderful. But go to every office. You see unbelievers there. In the Senate, unbelievers there. And believers are suffering and the kingdom is not truly advancing motion without progress hallelujah and every time all we know to do is oh satan satan is behind your life if you can get this devil i promise you everything in your life will change i beg to defer that that is not completely true we preach we set people free here but let me tell you the truth sometimes many people call and say ah but they prayed for me and I don't feel those demonic influences, but my life has not moved forward. Because you see, it, success is a component of many factors. Impartation is only one of the components. Success is an equation with many variables that equal success. These things have not been taught in church. I told you to write four words, we are going to discuss them. The most dangerous of all of them is that word called indifference you know what indifference is look up please you know what indifference is 
Indifference is a state of lack of interest and non-challenge. There are many people who hear this message right now and just shut down. Say it, this kind of thing. I thought we were going to talk on the seven planes of entering the seven dimension in the realm of the spirit. Hold on. Hold on. Because the first shock I need you to know is that those who God is sending you to are not born again. Are you listening to me? They don't speak in tongues. They don't know the Holy Spirit. They do not respect the value system of the kingdom. And so your first interaction with cosmos will not be your praying tongues. Your first interaction will be the spirit of excellence. Write this because I want to challenge you tonight. I really want to challenge you. Indifference. I don't care. There are many believers who do not see a need. There's no pressure to upgrade their lives, to move from where they are to where God wants them to be. Indifference. The greatest killer. We preach about lust. We preach about fornication. We preach about all of these things. Wonderful. These things are bad. But let me tell you, we must also preach about all these other things like indifference. Do you know that when Jesus challenged the Laodicean church in Revelations, one of his challenge towards them was indifference. He said, you are neither, was it the Laodicean church? One of the seven churches. He said, you are neither what? Hot nor... How can a man be neither hot nor cold? So you are standing neutral. That state of being neither hot nor cold does not mount pressure in your spirit. You are not extreme in anything. Hallelujah. So if people criticize this side, you can identify with them. If they criticize this side, you can identify with them. And that's the most comfortable position in life. Mediocrity. Indifference. Many of us are here. And when you hear messages like this, you just sit down and be wondering, is he really talking about me or some other people? Indifference. It has killed the church. We have no voice. Hallelujah. There are many people today, listen to me, who are unemployed in Nigeria, not because of Satan, because they do not understand the principles that will get them from where they are into a great place. I tell you the truth. Many people are not honest because in Nigeria, we love transferring responsibilities. It was not my fault. My stupid father took me to a herbalist. Look at where I am now. What did he do about it? Nothing. So we love it when we transfer responsibility and blame. Hallelujah. We love it when we spiritualize everything and cover for any lapse on our own part. Praise God. This is very, very important. And I get very irritated when I see people not teaching the body of Christ all of the principles that are supposed to equip them. The Bible says that the house is a come and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he took me and showed me a city and heavenly Jerusalem. He said it lieth four square. The length, the breadth, and the height were equal. In other words, there are many components that make a complete Christian. And a good preacher and a good leader must be able to expose all the people to all of those components. So that there will be a holistic building. You don't just have prayer warriors who are broke failures in life. Or anoint or prosperous people who are victims of Satan. Or anointed people who are bad fathers, bad mothers. You change a mind. You change a man by changing his value systems. His mindset. Hallelujah. That's why wicked men like Adolf Hitler and all these great men, they not only killed people, they sought to introduce new value systems. That's what they call brainwashing. You know what brainwashing is? 
they give you a new value system that can make you look at your blood mother who gave birth to you and you have another value system that is that does not even have respect for her value system and many of you may not realize we are there clapping and throwing people under the anointing in church and satan is infiltrating everywhere with a value system hallelujah gradually they are kicking anything that looks like god out of schools out of everything are you aware of that let me tell you the truth those who wanted to do that had that agenda since but they knew that some of them needed to become authorities in their field so that they can gain the required influence to carry out that wicked agenda and for decades they paid the price with that singular vision are you listening to me what you see happening to the world today was a decision that people set and they paid the price for years not in the body of christ we just teach people that you get born again receive the impartation and go in china today china has a dream of becoming the world superpower and let me tell you something the only person who can stop them is god are you listening to me you go and read the history of china and they came with certain leaders and the leaders began to put a new value system in the people they looked at their statistics and knew that the way chinese people were giving birth anyhow very soon the country was going to have a problem and they began to come up with measures of birth control using flamboyant advertisement that changed the mindset of people and attracting a lot of people giving them a lot of things hallelujah and then they started encouraging industrialization among their people are you listening to me they started letting them see how much a chinese product is better than any other product in the world and listen they drafted strategies to put that mindset even in a little chinese boy a little chinese person although he cannot speak english he has self-confidence more than a lot of people a system hallelujah and right now china produces a lot of things many nigerians run and produce inferior goods and run back into the country because of a country that can believe themselves and the last time i checked forbes list of most influential men president obama was not number one because certain people have an agenda and they are pressing towards it but when you come to the church if we listen listen to me christians a great man called matthew ashimo lowo kicc when he went to london he found out that although we were colonized by the british he saw that there was still that element of racism in the place and the blacks a lot of people some run from lagos follow through bridge follow through everywhere not by plano they get to london through all kinds of ways and they survive there they catch them they jail them for six months after six months they bring them and they are roaming on the street and he looked at these people and saw a depraved people that did not believe in themselves and he says i will change these people and he set up his ministry and brought them he began to teach them certain principles after a few years over seven right now as i speak to you over 60 to 70 percent of the people in his church own conglomerates and a lot of things the moment that happened the british government started noticing him because they started commanding influence they own the companies they own the banks they own the media and so you cannot have this kind of influence and not meet with the leaders and the kings that influence the minds of the people are you listening to me systemic invasion not just i receive i receive train people teach them give them the mindset build them i guarantee you you will fire them like the foxes that samson set on fire and left them the bible did not say he came to supervise them he just set the foxes on fire two by two and released them and the bible says they devoured the farm of the philistines hallelujah are you listening to me 
dominion through excellence lots of people do not we don't care about excellence it's not your fault you were not taught we the leaders who god has anointed have been there trying to look for money trying to look for fame trying to look for power trying to go on air trying to bring ridiculous projects that god did not send us to do and we will not concentrate he said who are these he said what is this that you see he said four horns he said these horns have risen to judge judah he said but i will send carpenters 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 what is the work of a carpenter to construct so god sends us as carpenters and we begin to train men who will judge these horns the bible says in obadiah 21 it says and saviors shall arise out of zion and shall judge the mount of Esau. let me tell you something brothers and sisters if all you keep getting every week in koinonia is falling on the floor or hands lay, being laid on you i assure you you will hate me in the next 10 years because you will see men who didn't pray like you who didn't fast like you but you are now moving around with cvs praying in tongues for jobs in their own companies are you listening to me that's what we have in church so a lot of believers are confused they cannot understand why a man who does not love god sleeping with ladies all around but he's the one who owns virgin atlantic i didn't say that oh it's an example before you, you go and write on newspaper that joshua selman said this. no 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 example hallelujah or you find out that every believer we are just praying praying and somebody says hallelujah the lord showed me that soon we'll have a tv ministry and the man claps he said am i not a prophet shame on him what of the owner of the tv ministry who can kick your program out at any time why not train people and teach them the principles challenge and inspire people release an anointing and release knowledge and understanding in them let somebody rise and own a television station let somebody rise and and put a software that before it works it must say a scripture you must listen to it you should know me by now as you are clapping i hope you are getting it hallelujah now every time we say this thing people just say whoa but i indifference after people say they just say kai this message was very nice what are you doing about it hallelujah i don't see limits in my life i am telling you see this is my mindset i don't see limits you never never will come and find me putting my hand like this and you say why i say kai i'm thinking of i'm always optimistic but i know whom i have believed and I am persuaded. I'm persuaded. Look at lots of graduates in Nigeria. They love God. They were presidents of fellowships. But they were only taught the side of the anointing. Now, they go for a job interview. There's nobody to lay hands on. And they have to queue. A long queue. They were not taught principles. How to, how to do a lot of things. They have no character. They have. They don't understand the principles. There are many people who are who get jobs, and for years they are not promoted, and they get angry because they lack the necessary knowledge to leave the stage where they are and go beyond. And they think the remedy is just prayer, and they keep praying, praying, and God leads them to a book, and they look. They say, No, no, this guy, I know him. is is not is not a fiery person. Let me ask you a question. How has your life been so far? Is there anything that inspires you? There are names that when you call, you call names that are very nice. Look at the sound that we are using. Because of this mic, many people have gotten healed. Many people have gotten blessed. The media is streaming right now. There's Facebook and Twitter. This was somebody who believed himself enough to get up and take influence. Excellence at all times. See,
The spirit of excellence is not about money. This is what I want you to get. A lot of people have given excuses as to why their lives are the way they are. They say, if only I had more money. Koinonia, say you are rich. That's why you can do everything. It's a spirit. It's a culture. It's an attitude. Excellence is not just about money. It's about a spirit. I know many millionaire ministers who are not excellent at all. They are anointed. They are filled with the Holy Ghost. They are not excellent. The quality of being outstanding. The quality of being thorough. Write it, thorough. Many people are not thorough in their lives. You are studying a principle. You are not thorough. We like stopping halfway. 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 We don't ask the right questions. We don't pay the price to stay long enough. We are always in a hurry. No thoroughness. That's the result. Lack of excellence. Someone wants to learn keyboard. He just learned something small. You start roaming around and telling everybody, I can play. The fact that they are not attending to you is a message. Get angry and go back. Let me tell you something. Excellence defies religion. It defies gender. It defies race and ethnicity. You meet an excellent man. He will break any barrier in life. I was listening to a speech by one brilliant lady, Nigerian lady. Hallelujah. On KICC. And... I think she's one of the editors of these great magazines. And when she was speaking, I could, I, I sat down and I felt like a child. I said, Lord, I need to rise beyond this level I am. I am where I am today because of the degree of value I've placed on excellence. If I step higher, I will rise higher than this. There are many preachers. And you know, let me tell you the thing about results and excellence. Every time you keep nonchalance and you don't move forward and someone else is moving forward, you will be angry. When I drive a golf and I bring here, there are many of you who will see, you are happy because it's consoling your present position. But if I step in here with a Lincoln Navigator, people will start talking. Some of you say, ah, me, this kind of shady success, I'm not sure. We always want people to do things that keep us comfortable the moment they begin to do things that challenge you you try to find excuses see it's not every power you see that you look at oh forget about these people let me tell you something about my life and i say this with all humility i pray i fast but let me give you a bit of my personal life listen every single day every single day i do not sleep until I take out time to study on leadership, on finance, on entrepreneurship. Are you listening to me? Many people just think I'm just standing and God anointed me. Get the anointing and go. Are you listening to me? I don't do that. In my laptop right now, I have Christ Embassy Pastoral Course. The whole series. This is not even something that is given anyhow. I made sure I got it. I'm listening to it. Oga Jordan brought certain books. I ordered it right now. There are four books that I have and I must read at least between now and the next two weeks. Be the Best by Matthew Ashimolo. 10 M's of Money by Matthew Ashimolo. Pastoring Without Tears by Sondia Delaja and the Jesus He Never Knew. These were new books. When he brought John Maxwell's Five levels of leadership. I saw it. I bought it. What are you doing to leave the level you are in now and rise to become a world champion? Many of you are waiting. The day my brother rises, he will remember me. And then you'll be angry because your brother will forget you when he gets there. Say this brother, self. What is the benefit of an elder brother? Is it not to take some of us? Don't start doing something about your life. We are always waiting for somebody to pick us. When will you start carrying others? every day are you listening to me in my system right now i was given global leadership summit for last year 
2012. I have it. And I've been listening to it. Some of the brilliant Christian minds in leadership across the whole world. When I listened to the first one, I put my hand on my head. I got down on my knees. I felt ashamed of myself. I said, Joshua Selma, what have you been doing? I'm sure many of you are surprised now. That's how, that's how you'll be surprised. Me too, I'll be surprised. Them too, they are surprised when they listen to somebody else. Join the flow. Don't stand outside and be criticizing and talking. Because very soon, all you will see is dust by champions who have passed you. Are you listening to me? What do you think preaching is? Just standing to talk? Do you understand that for you to be a good preacher, there are some things you need to have? The psychology of communication? You need to know a lot of things? What do you think preaching is? Just holding a mic take. And you watch the way people will be sleeping the moment you are talking. Say after me, excellence. Very important. I need you to get this. When God told us we're starting Koinonia, we didn't just sit down while we're praying and we're fasting. What happened? We set up different departments and began to run trainings for different people. Most of the people you see today, they were not like that. A true leader does not maintain followers. He raises other leaders. We have a lot of preachers maintaining followers so that they alone will become the superstar because they are intimidated. They need to go and read books and attend courses and trainings. But they won't do it because they've surrounded themselves with mediocres that keep lying to them. Your greatest enemy is the one who encourages you to remain where you are. I don't care who that person is. My father told me something years ago. He said it's better to stay with a wise enemy than a foolish friend. Your friend loves you the way you are. He won't hurt you because he values your relationship. But your enemy will cause you to have to be smarter than him to survive. I refuse to remain where I am. I refuse. There are things I do all the time. Let me hurry up. I have so much, I have so much to share. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following, right? To achieve excellence in life, I will not be small in the name of Jesus Christ. I have found my way out of mediocrity in life. I'm telling you, I found my way. I know it. I've seen the door. I found my way out of average. I found myself out of mediocrity. No competition. I found my way to be the best and be the greatest in life. This is not pride. This is the truth. This is what knowledge does to you. Intimidation is because you do not know your way out. For when you know what you have and when you see that door that has been set before you, you will rise up like a champion. Oh, I'll never be a failure. This is not a confession. It's the truth. I found my way out of certain things forever. Satan notwithstanding, I will live my life as if Satan does not exist. There are some battles. I wrote a, I read a beautiful book, a gift that Dr. John Akbami gave me. Battles Satan cannot win. Powerful book. There are some battles that Satan has lost before he started. I believe. Hallelujah. Oh, Koinonia will keep rising. No, no. It's, no, this is not the issue of amen. The grace of God is there. And there are principles that have been tested through centuries and decades before Lord Lugard amalgamated Nigeria. It has worked. It won't break. They are irrefutable principles. This is not just the issue of prayer. So long as human beings have two legs and two hands, it will work. Kappa katabala. Thank you, Jesus. This is why I celebrate him all the time. You can stand tall through life and you just look at people and say, just hold on. It's just a matter of time. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way 
it used to be before your presence came and changed me I won't go back I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me in 2007 I was in Port Harcourt I was taking care of someone in the house where I was staying in the hospital UST the highest floor I was there suddenly I looked outside through the mirror and I was taken in the vision and I saw the international headquarters of ENI I opened my mouth I said is this on earth I saw 38 flags different nations of the world but listen I would have easily laid down and say I saw it I tell you the truth I would have died without seeing it many of you have seen many things from the day you were born how old are you now almost 40 nothing has changed every time you are stuck in life realize that it's a sign that what you know so far has ex is exhausted hallelujah dr lukoya said something one time i was listening and he said something very powerful he said that's what prof said he said you need a level of knowledge higher than you were when the problem came to conquer it are you listening to me in other words if you are in level eight and you find a problem in level eight you need knowledge higher than level eight to ever go in life there are many people who members they get to hundred members and they find out that with all the prayer and fasting they don't break that hundred member barrier they remain there so they just say that's how God wants it or forget to oh, anytime you see crowd anywhere look at the man look at his eyes very well only God knows what has happened R immediately he's talking somebody will come with an anointing and set up something close to him and you will see the same people who he has been trying and begging see brothers and sisters anytime you are stuck in life don't waste your time criticizing those going ahead your criticism will not stop them join the train and get out of your present predicaments hallelujah say i'll never be a failure in life say i'll never be small say it stop all this false humility say it I refuse to be small in life I'm telling you I'm speaking to your spirit refuse it commit yourself to excellence be thorough be thorough be thorough don't leave your life to chance be thorough what gift has God given you the Bible says Proverbs 31 verse 31 it says many daughters have done well but you your excellence has brought you above them he said many daughters have done well many bankers have done well many media giants have done well many preachers have done well many businessmen have done well he said but you excellence them all see let me tell you the truth what you see in koinonia today was my mindset of yesterday you wait and see my mindset of today what you are seeing today is not our mindset of today this is old wine i tell you the truth this is old wine this was the mindset we we're preparing for when we we're at the back of chapel you hold on and see for then let me tell you god is alert and active watching over his word he's watching obedient people When God announced to us that this is a year of supernatural exploit, I knew that it's not enough to just say, thank you, Lord. I began to say, Lord, what are the things I need? It means I need a higher level of information. Oh boy, I wish I had time. All right, very quickly. I really wish I had time. But so, let's just get something. To achieve excellence in life, you need the following. Please make sure you are writing. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number one, when God wants to bring you into a life of excellence, the first thing you need is exposure. Right, exposure. Exposure. Let me tell you something about the power of exposure. Look up. 
if you are not exposed to something higher than what your mind knows, your mind can paint the portrait of a world of mediocrity and leave you there. Hallelujah. I was in secondary school. Our secondary school is not like your own. The one you went to. Where you ate yam and chicken. I never ate chicken in secondary school. Just one, Hanagama. I never ate chicken. Hallelujah. Not once. But, listen, but, we were local champions around our local government. I mean, if we came to do debate with your school, you are, you are gone. Just start crying. Hallelujah. We had a debate with Jake's school. We came and came them those times. Ah, it was a delightsome experience. Ladies looked at us. They are ladies. We were winning those times. But we remained at that level until we met another school. Exposure. Say after me, exposure. God will expose you to something. Listen. Exposure, those three, those three things. Number one, the power of exposure. One, it takes you beyond your present horizon. It shows you that there is something higher than what you have seen. Exposure challenges you. Exposure provokes you. Sometimes, exposure embarrasses you. And these are all tools that God uses to show you that there is a need to step up in life. Hallelujah. Exposure. For instance, you never knew. There's one song. Um, ah, I didn't know you will answer me this way. Hold on. That's a lovely song. I said that to say this. That I just remember the story. I went for administration some years ago and we're just trusting God. It was an awesome opportunity to get to, even if it's 10 people. And it was wonderful. And I went there and the people treated me so well. And then there, it was a youth meeting then, but their, their prophet or their bishop or something, he said he wanted to have dinner with me. So you know in my mind, what is dinner? What is dinner? What have you been eating as dinner? Two or something or this and that and that. So I went. Was smart. When I got there and I, I saw what was there, I, I first didn't know what to do. Because I wanted to behave myself. I preached a powerful message. I didn't want to just disgrace and cancel everything. that I was looking for everything that can keep up my reputation at that point. So I sat down. And I saw things I didn't know what they were. I saw a pack. I didn't know it was milk inside. You, we only know milk in tin. Correct? You are laughing. Which one have you seen? So I didn't know it was liquid milk inside. And I behaved myself. I already made up my mind to be humble. So I was ready to ask questions. I had learned more than what you don't know. Just ask. Don't try to disgrace yourself the more. Ask. So I sat down and uh, I diplomatically cracked a joke and we started talking. And then I sat down there and I knew that I didn't know this thing. So I assumed that I was, the only thing I could do was to just behave like I was in the spirit. You know, they won't ask you too many questions. So I was behaving. And I was watching what they were doing. I learned numerous lessons when I was watching. I was seeing everything. I would have fumbled, disgraced myself, disgraced E and I, left a bad reputation. When I saw that thing, what happened? Say after me, exposure. Say it, exposure. I said, Lord, thank you that it happened with just three or four people. When I went back, I sat down on my laptop. I browsed everything about table etiquette, kinds of food, how to behave, courses of meal and everything. Because I'm making way for the blessing. 
you know, the more you rise, the more you implicate yourself. People expect that you should have done certain homeworks. So they just... Some of you will get somewhere. You enter someone's house. You just see two toilets. You just think it's for you to choose anyone. You don't know what it's for. Don't pretend you didn't have it. Ask questions. Not just, ah, the type in our house is green. You don't know what it's for. Say after me, exposure. Don't be ashamed. Say exposure. Many of you, when you came into this school, ladies, you know what you used to wrap around yourself. You didn't know that the society was this sensitive. You just wrap everything and put your head around. But with time, you began to study other people. You say, ah, this is not good for me. And what happened? It was a secret exposure. You didn't tell anybody. The first day you cooked, you ate it alone. All your friends were saying, Kai, you tried, oh, this is nice. Everybody left you and your food there. For some of you, from that time till now, you have been living in deceit. May God take you to see somebody's food that will provoke you not to rest till you go for catering. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say after me, exposure. Prepare. Look up, please. I'm teaching you how to adopt the spirit of excellence. You prepare. Sir, let me have this cup. Why did they do this? How many of you know? Don't pretend. How many of you know why this was done? You've never cared to ask? Why did, when did they start doing this? Hallelujah. One day now, you now say you want to be a virtuous lady. They'll say, sister, please come. There are some white people who just came from somewhere. And I hear you attend Koinonia. You, you are a disciplined lady. I mean, all the rest run around. Please help us. Just set the table and make sure you make everything. And you are sweating around. Set the table. Oh, God. The Bible says you are the one who will do it. Now I'm the one who is doing it. Thank you, sir. And you disgrace... You disgrace yourself and your family. Hallelujah. Many of you keep disgracing yourselves and disgracing people. You know why? Shame will never live your life until you adopt the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. You saw that a new design came out. You didn't ask all the questions how they wear it. You went, your money only reached for one part of the dressing. You carried it, wore it, and you were just coming around and smiling, looking at yourself, almost hitting yourself. Exposure. Say after me, exposure. It's not your fault. You came from the village. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. You have been lying as if you are living in Ikoi, Lagos. Humble yourself. Embrace the exposure and leave that realm. Leave that realm. They bring something for you. You don't know whether it's rice or it's chicken. And it's just keep quiet. You say, ah, but uh, there's turkey. They say, no, no, it's not turkey. It's, it's fish. You say, ah, I forgot. See me again. Now, you are tongue talking. You are tongue talking. You are anointed. Do you think if I'm a director and I want to employ you, I will employ you to go and disgrace my company? No way. No way. And you say, somebody in your village. Whereas somebody who is not born again, not filled with the Holy Spirit, but pays the price to learn some things. You are going for a job interview. You are, you are dressing as if you are going to watch football. You are seeing everybody dressing smart. And you will just throw, say, the most important thing is the anointing I have. You enter the place, they say, why are you like this? This is how you want to become a staff? Are you aware this is a bank? Or this is an insurance company? You say, yes, I'm aware. You are, you are now getting arrogant because you think you are standing in front of Koinonia. You just imagine that it's your church. What is all this now? They've taught you positive confession. You are now shouting. The people say, please, this way. Walk out of this place. We don't like this kind of people. Walk out of this place. Hallelujah. Many of you do not want to train yourself. 
you don't want to build yourself. You have been taught that knowledge is inferior. The most important thing is just the anointing. I'm teaching you today that excellence will take you out of where you are into a world that you have never imagined. Please, let's hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. So you need what? Say, Lord, expose me. It could be an illumination in the world that you have never seen. And God exposes you. It could be a program. It could be whatever that opens you up. Exposure. This is a beautiful design by our decorations department. Appreciate them. Exposure. Because when you become a champion, you will know how to celebrate people. Appreciate them, please. Hallelujah. You go for a meeting somewhere, they say, this is a professor. Everybody is clapping you. You are sitting down. They'll say, sorry, please, can you? They will lead you outside as if they want to ask you a question and close the door. They are videotaping it. They want to show the world that there is a way. See, listen, it's called the law of protocol. Protocol. Learn these things. Learn it. Learn it. Learn it. Don't say it does not matter. How old are you that you are saying it does not matter? Those who have been practicing it have lived by it. I hope you are receiving something tonight. I hope you are not just laughing. Because me, I'm serious about what I'm saying. It must not be a negative exposure. There are negative exposures. For instance, you see a lady who is a prostitute, dresses one kind. And she comes and you are there seated. And many guys are just coming. You say, all right. So this is what guys want. That's it. You go back. You know how Nigerian films are. The next thing they show, the villager girl just comes out. Say, how do I look? They say, this is it. And then the men begin to come. That's negative exposure. Positive exposure will inspire you. Are you listening to me? It won't kill your destiny. It will inspire you. Many of you are mentoring the lives of people who are not born again. They are not serious. They are not using principles that are consistent with the word of God. You will become like them and you will go to hell at the end. So stop that. Everything we are discussing has to be within the jurisdiction of the principles of the kingdom. So number one, you need exposure. Number two, exposure will create a need in you. To rise higher and this leads to the next point determination because of the pain of the embarrassment you had you will vow a vow that nobody needs to supervise you tell yourself it will never happen again i was told one day that there are some guys young guys are like claiming as in this kind you know young guys when they see an elderly woman they like claiming look i'm responsible i can take care of your daughter and so the, the car had a problem and they asked them, the woman was inside and they wanted to jumpstart it. So the guys were pushing. The woman was tired. She said, ah, you poor young men, sorry, some of you enter and none of them could drive. And they had been behaving as in, we are ready to take care of your daughter. The woman said, confidently, say, please, enter and help me, you know, an old woman, I've tried. And the guys were sweating there. Yeah. Oh boy, you shall be drive the other one. said, no, you go. If I ask you why can't why can't you drive? You say because a car has not come. That's called mediocrity. Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. Sister, what can you cook? Jollof rice and boiled yam. What else? Nothing else. Who do you want to marry? Pastor. And kill him. And kill him. What if he fasts for seven days? That's what you plan to give him? And the guy has not come and said, Lord, I'm warning you now. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Stop warning God. Get back. Create exposure. And have a determination to move ahead. You have a restaurant. Nobody has come to eat. You didn't ask why. You went for prayer. Now they prayed for you. Nothing changed. Is the rice that is overnight by 1 p.m. You are still selling yesterday's rice. 
I will never come and eat in your restaurant. Whether you are a member of Koinonia, it doesn't matter what department you are functioning. I won't come and eat because I have only one body and I need to take care of it. If you are not ready to step up and then we say we are looking for caterers to cook for the ministers, you say I'm available. Available. Music artist. I was listening to a lady today. Top sticks, they call her. Ah, I put my hand on my head. Do you know her? How many of you know her? Yet you see, I'm a drummer. See, I saw myself in the dream playing drums. Don't just let dreams deceive you. It takes action to bring what you have seen in the realm of the spirit to manifest in this realm. Am I challenging you? I watched this lady. I put my hand on my head. I wanted us to play it. It would have challenged you, sisters. There is no excellent person who is not prosperous and fulfilled because it would defy barriers. The same way some people are begging for jobs. Certain people, see, I learned a lesson in life. I'm still coming back for banks. Banks, I'm coming back for you in the future. I applied for a loan in 2008. The banks did this. They looked at me, looked at me, sized me out, and drove me out. I said, no problem. A day will come. It will be members of Koinonia that will have that bank. That, that, that was no Koinonia then. E and I. When they have it, I can walk in. There's what we call human capital, not land. You are the capital. So I said, if I don't have land, I will become the capital. Get knowledge. Get wisdom. Become equal to a nation. One man. Pastor Tunde Bakare was preaching. A bank abroad called him and they were begging him. They said, please collect a loan of $10 million. They were begging him. He said, what for? He said, please just take it. They said, because they are afraid of the recession. So they are looking for human beings that control influence. So that they will collect loan. So it can keep the bank stable. Are you listening to me? So people like Adeboya and the rest now. If he comes for loan, he is equal. Look at redeem. Can they make one bank? Or how many banks? So they'll say, please, Papa, collect money from us. Some of us are begging and say, give us money. Say, wait, wait. Uh, you have to present this and that. I said, no problem. It's not your fault. I don't have land, but I can have what? I said, I'm coming. This is the right thing you will do this thing for. This one that you do. I'm coming back. And I said, a day will come. On my table will be many offers from banks. I said, the problem is that we are blessed. Let me just pray for you. Is it not increase you want? Oh, it will happen. It will happen. It will happen. <laughs> knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. I found my way to the top. It will happen. It will happen. A day will come. I will ask. See, some of you one day will sit down. If you take what I'm saying serious. You say, mommy, do you want a bungalow? Matua Shimolo, hog bread in this area. The road you follow to come for Koinonia. He put bread on his head. Buy bread. Buy bread. He was hogging it. Some of our parents were laughing at him. Now, he's a world champion. What takes a man from a bread? He came to Zaria. He has a house. He still has a house there. When he came in, he said they should build the house. And in 30 days, they completed it. Plus polishing. Why wouldn't they build it when the money is there? Some of our parents have been building since 1991. Just four bedroom flat. Till today, we have not completed it. Everybody you thought was stopping the building has died. Yet the building has not increased. Now, let's visit that word I wrote. Change. Change. Help us, Holy Spirit. Change. Remember the word? Let's visit it today. When you are determined to succeed, that means you are determined to change some things about your life. The difference between the rich and the poor is not money. 
is their habits, their mindsets. The difference between those that God uses mightily and those who grumble and criticize and scrabble over others is their mindsets. And I want you to live where you are today and rise. There's always backbiting. There's nothing called front biting. Backbiting is for those who are far behind, who are looking for an excuse for why they are where they are. Change. Listen. There are a few things I've seen that happen to people every time you hear the word like this. I wrote reactions that forerun change. Number one, refusal or denial or indifference about your present situation. That means why you need to remain there. There are many of us, when you hear a word like this, it will embarrass you, it will sting your ego. That's what is happening to many of us. You are angry, you wish you can flog me. That's why you are not sitting here. And now you are just saying, oh God, this guy, why is he saying this thing now? There are many people who hear messages like this and get angry. They don't know why they are angry. They think they are angry at the man of God. They are not angry at the man of God. It's a reaction that is compelling change. Because when you hear a message like that, it rattles you. And you can either be meek and broken or you can stand and give excuses and say, okay, forget it, Jare. So the first thing people do when they are confronted with change is to refuse it. They try to give excuses. They try to be indifferent and say, well, I've had the time will tell who is right. Me, I'll keep my prayer. I won't let anybody preach any nonsense. Time will tell. <laughs> you better repent now. You don't need to wait till the future. Just look. Look at two people. One who looks like you and one who looks like what we are preaching. Project them and see what is happening to their lives. Experience. People say it's the best teacher, but it must not be your experience. Be wise enough and look at other people. For instance, our family members. I know families that conduct vigils every Thursday and Friday in their house. They wake everybody. Some of your families do that. The moment you see people waking, know that your father is under pressure. Something is wrong. Wake up and come out. We have a problem and you are sleeping there. Come out. And you are praying and you are sleeping. You are saying, Lord, is this really the solution to this problem? Because your father cannot sleep. You will sleep too. Growing up, when my father is annoyed, everybody must partake of that annoyance directly for something very small like keeping this bible here you say is this where it's supposed to be you know that the real thing is not the bible there's it's a cumulative of something you watch your friend on news you just start getting angry and see all these people they now pretend as if they don't know us the truth is he has forgotten about you let me just tell you the truth because they don't look back leaders look forward so if you ever want people to remember you, come forward. Many of you are there angry. They don't remember us. Uh -uh. You want them to just turn back like that? So that they will fail and then you say, hey, I knew it won't last. That's indifference. If it works well, you say, I knew. It's just that I didn't say it. If it fails, you say, Shebi, I, I told you I'd be indifferent. After you refuse, then it leads to anger and embarrassment. That's the second stage. Because right now you are, that anger and embarrassment is a confrontation in your heart. You are knowing, you are knowing right now that this is true. I need to change. So you are either getting angry at the vessel or you are getting angry at your situation. Number three, the moment you finally settle it, that where I am, it's not good enough. What happens? The third thing is you begin to negotiate for cheap routes so that you escape fast, so that people will not know. Cheap routes. Unfortunately, there are no cheap routes in life. It's only in advertisement. I have one, this thing on my phone. It said, marriage, instant, no dues. So he wrote, he said, there's no marriage, instant, no dues. It's in America, they do that. 
Oh, I love you. You love me. Let's marry. They just get one priest from somewhere. Just comes out from somewhere and just join the people. Two weeks later, you look at them and say, how are you? Say, I'm not doing it again. He doesn't love me. Oh, I don't love you. What, did, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? When your mother was getting married in the village, she knew she was in for it. She was determined to make it work. We are not touching those areas now. Ah, one day we'll talk about it. You've not heard me preach about it for a long time. I went to Delta and when they were picking me for the state conference from my hotel room, the two guys were arguing. They said, sir, want to find out your opinion about marriage. I said, ah, don't start. Because I said, you people don't want to know my opinion. My opinion about many things is always causing trouble. So a day will come, we'll share that one. Praise God. I'm sure that day some of you will just stand up and say, Phew, just walk away. <laughs> Negotiating for cheap alternatives. Cheap alternatives. If that does not work, then you come to terms with the fact that change is inevitable. In other words, you cannot hide it. You may cry about it. You may feel embarrassed about it. But you have to change. At that point, it will bring you to a point where you are humble. And you will receive and say, okay, I'm wrong. I need to change. Listen, do you know how hard it is for people to accept change in their lives? Because change means you have to admit that what you know is not enough. That's why humility is the fastest tool to receive change. Once you are humble, you can embrace change. Hallelujah. Have you seen someone in class who bragged about one test? The guy bragged and said, if I don't pass, change my name. And then, maybe it's just one question. So you either get 10 over 10 or 0. And they were calling the names of those who are 10 over 10 and his name was not there. And then the guy just sat down and everybody's looking at him. And the guy is trying to manage multiple pressures, not knowing what to do. And then they say, who can help us solve it? And then the guy wants to quickly stand up and go and solve it. He said, oh, I know the right thing. And when he stands up, he says, no, 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 you got 0, please sit down. They will keep embarrassing you till you come to a point where you say, all right, I am a brilliant student, but I didn't get this right. See, have meekness and humility. It will help you embrace change. Are you listening to me? Meekness and what? Humility. There are people today in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has opened them up to a revelation. But changing it may mean changing the ideology of the ministry. They would rather remain like that than to contend for truth. Is that true? Some of your churches are like that. The founders, the overseers, whoever, God has given them encounters and are saying this gospel you are preaching, you need to change it. Something is wrong. And they look at the reputation they have built for decades and say, Kai, if I change this thing now, it's as good as dying. Hallelujah. Or your father beats your mother. Two of them do and go and they go to church. And then a man of God with big mouth like me comes and says, there are men in this place. You beat your wife this morning before coming. And he's sitting down. Say, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. And you see your father struggling with change. Battling with change. Doing suddenly like he's sending a text message. Or God, turn to your wife and say, I'm sorry. Just battling. That's why I taught you these virtues last week. I'm sorry. Remember? Please. What else? Thank you. You came for koinonia and you matched somebody. The person says, sister, you matched me. You just turn and look at him and say, is it where they keep Bibles? Why don't you change? Change is very hard. This is what kept, this is what kept Nitel out of the way. If your father works in Nitel, I'm sorry. But this is what took them out. The ability to embrace change will always keep you in season. Hallelujah. Many people have refused to change. And now they are victims. Let's hurry up. Number three. 
All those things I've said are number two. To achieve excellence in life, one, you need exposure. Two, determination to succeed. That's where we spoke about change. Number three, set goals. Set goals on what you want to become like. Set a high standard. If you tell me you want to become excellence, I'll say like who or what. Give me a reference. You must have a reference. A reference is someone or something that have become close or equal to what you want to become like. You must have somebody or somewhere you are looking up to. Set a very high standard. Set a clear standard. I want to be an entrepreneur. What kind? Like who? Call the name of one person who can give us a portrait of what you want to become like. Those in the world know that. Ask them who is your role model. They just say Timaya. Ask a small child. I mean, at least they have an idea. You know what that means? Go to their rooms and all you see is Timaya's tapes and everything. Because they want to follow the principles he followed to get there. Ask believers. He say you are an artist. Say wonderful. So tell me three people that really inspire you that you want to become like. Say me, oh. The way I do my things, even me, I'm not sure. We just keep moving. You will never, never become the kind of figure that you are seeing. I assure you. I assure you. Unfortunately, and I must say this now. Many pastors have taught people that if I am your pastor or I am your spiritual father, I'm the only one you should listen to. Don't listen to anybody. Don't take anybody. Question. You want to become a media giant. Your pastor is only a preacher. How is he going to mentor you into that? He can guide you. He can instruct you. He can advise you. But you need to find a mentor along the area that God is taking you to. This is the message they don't preach in church. Because people always think, oh, if you are my son or you are my daughter, it means your offering is coming to me alone. Get that junk out of the church. That's what is keeping people where they are. He looks popular, but he did not come from God. He doesn't produce successful people. Hmm. You want to own an airline. Like which one? You don't know. I assure you, you won't arrive. I watched one cartoon growing up called Alice in Wonderland. Fantasies that happen in one Wonderland. That's how many people are living. <laughs> you ask them, they, start, they even close their eyes when they are telling you. You won't get there. Look at me. I want to ask two people randomly. Brother, stand up. You, stand up. What do you want to become in life? Don't shout me. Come and tell me. Don't, you don't need to tell everybody none of their business. All right. This is why you are here. May God bless you for your honesty. Are you seeing that? He said an answer that many of you will not have courage to say. Because you sit down and act like you know. How about you, sir? Okay. I want to be a solution. To you want to be a solution to the world? Ick. No, no. Don't laugh. Hold on. This is a school. You want to be a solution to the world. That's wonderful. What solution? A medical doctor is a solution. A carpenter is a solution. A mechanic is a solution. A banker is a solution. In what area? Biochemistry. In biochemistry. So you want to take that field. God bless you. You see now that what you see what you are receiving in this place, guidance. So go and find a God-fearing biochemist. Are you listening to me? How do you get that? Go and Google it. Christian professional biochemists, look for them. You find a particular biochemist. He has probably written books. He probably has videos on YouTube. Go to engineering faculty in the night. Pay the price and download it. And start listening. You will get their mindsets. Before you know it, you will rise above ABU. Rise above Zaria. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I've left Nigeria. I, I never will be limited with this environment. Hallelujah. Are you learning something now? So, write it. Find somebody. Say, who do you want to become? Say, an apostle. Like who? What, is it God, what did God tell you? You are not clear. Go back. Stop going out. Go back to the secret place. There are questions to ask. But you left an incomplete session and you got up and you are running. There are many ministries today. 
ask me what every time we hold leadership meetings, whether ministers meeting, whether um, um, HODs or ESCOs or whatever, the f we discuss it. I tell them why this ministry exists. In one sentence, I can tell you what we are here to do. Periodically, I remind all the leaders, we are not existing to do everything. There are many preachers, go and ask them, why did you start your church? Say, well, an angel appeared, it was on the 20th. Why did you start your church? Say, the angel told me, he said, now this day I have commissioned. Why did you start your church? Little wonder people are committed in your church. They come and go because there is no definition of vision. They don't know what they are going to become. Why did you start your church? Now you started a prayer group. Even if it started supernaturally, eventually you go and ask God. He said, now Lord, people are coming in this prayer group. Where are we going to? You are just praying with a sister. Praying with a sister. Where are you going to? Do you like her? Are you starting the ministry together? Are you prayer partners? Vision. Define it. We'll be praying every day. And the sister is saying, so what's the next instruction God is giving? You are saying, let's just keep praying. Where are you going? Nobody follows a leader that does not have conviction and where you are going. I assure you. So set goals. Set goals. In the area of finances, there are people that I model their lives. In the area of ministry, there are people I model their lives. In the area of leadership, there are people I plan to be higher. When you go to my place, you see above my television, I put my picture there. People think it's just for entertainment. No, it's prophetic. Because I'm seeing it, I'm saying whatever I see on this television, the hand of God will take me above it. And then you see books there. Some of you, when we get there, it's just dreams you write. Wishes, useless wishes that may never come to pass. The only goal you have is the kind of man you want to marry. That's good, but that's not enough. You even draw the person. His eyelashes must be wide and rich here. Apply that same principle for your life and destiny. Or the brother, she must be this, me, I won't take anything. Joshua Selman has taught us excellence. I won't take anything. Then you too, you better work to match the excellence you want. There are many brothers here. You want a beautiful sister. Every time you come, you just look at her. Just turn, worship team. You are just looking. You are not organized. You are not well behaved. You are not well cultured. You are not disciplined. You have no vision. You are not doing anything about your life. They say, who do you want? One day you even meet your friend and say, Guy, I've been thinking about something. You better stop thinking. You better stop thinking. Quick! And, and get to what you are doing. Better stop thinking. Don't punish your mind for nothing. Stop thinking. First things first. Clarity. Say after me, I receive grace to set definite goals for my life. Write a quick assignment you do. Write three, go and look for three people that represent the areas. They must be believers. They must be believers. Three people that give a picture of what you know God wants you to do. Whether in ministry, not very high. Raise your standard high. If you want to own a TV ministry, like which one? For instance, you can say like TBN, like God TV, like KICC, for instance. You say, God has told me this, my hand will count money. There's one song. You see this, my hand, you. Many people even count it. It go count dollars. You would dance that thing and never count any dollar. It's wonderful. Do the motions of the church, motivate yourself. But after that, go and sit down. You didn't even mention naira, mention dollars. Hallelujah. Set a standard. When I look at ministry, there are people that inspire me. 
I read their books. It doesn't mean you will receive everything. There will be excesses here and there in their lives. Jump all those things and concentrate on what you can get. Are you listening to me? There are many people whose mindsets in certain areas I don't quite agree with. Stop criticizing. Just get what you can get and go. Hallelujah. Set goals. So that you can know when you set goals, you must begin to put pressure on yourself to achieve those goals. Don't just set blind goals. Set goals. There are ministries that we, as a ministry, I've, I've taught, I carried the heads of department, the ministers, and we went to Koza Abuja. Why? Because I love and I respect their excellence. Do you know it takes a lot of humility to do that? Because I'm not failing in ministry. I know I'm anointed. But you must humble yourself. I'm saying it openly because it's not a thing to hide. There are many ministers that listen to my messages and just stand up and pretend. They, I know it. I see it sometimes in visions. See, celebrate greatness when you enter its presence. There are people who bless my life. I don't hide it. And we took all the leaders and we went to Koza. We went in the morning. We sat down there. Our head of department of different departments went to their head of departments and they were learning. Don't ask questions why we are excellent. And this is not, this is old wine. I'm telling you, this is old wine. You wait and see what God is doing. They have adopted principles. For instance, I know that Ilorin and Ibadan is the place of music people. Is that true? Some of you musicians don't even know. You think it's, it's Samaru. That's the problem. Come. He was over at my place today and I was doing discussions with him. It was him that told me about the lady. How many of you like his singing? Ilorin people again. You see that? And I was, I was asking him a question. I said, tell me about the music in Ilorin. And he said, ah, the people there, most of them like money, 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 but they are excellent. They are competent. I said, ah. I said, tell me more. And I was just listening. He said, tell me more. I said, all right, God bless you. Every time I challenge the decoration department, they don't just bring some of these designs off heart. They sit down and look at certain things. The protocol, almost every department and if you're a head of department here and you don't have an idea of any ministry that does your department and an idea of a picture, it means you are misleading your people. You do anything you want to do today. You do. Thank God there are ministers there to supervise you. When you are going out, of course, it's our job to bring you back. Question. Who inspires you? Yourself. That's why you are still where you are. You are the only one who inspires yourself. You don't have any figure that inspires you out of the many mentors in my life my greatest mentor is Jesus Christ and I no 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 I know many of you will not Jesus inspires me boy when I study the Bible sometimes I just put it on my head I say Baba Jesus I just laugh I mean this guy was something else he inspires me who inspires you show me the person that inspires you and I'll tell you why you are in your life for many of us, we are surrounded by people who are failures in life. It doesn't mean you should hate them, but they cannot be your role models. It's out of pity many of us look up to some people. I won't let a failure inspire me. I won't criticize him. I will love him. But I know he will not help me to get where I want to go to. There are many of you who are friends with people who don't inspire you. It's just out of pity. We have been there since secondary school. You want to read. After you read for two hours, you say, I beg, Jare, Jesus is coming soon. You say, not true. You just close your book. And you keep getting zeros. 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 And you'll be wondering, zeros. The best student in your class is reading. You go and sleep and come back and still see the person reading. Because every time he's tired, he sees, did you have that kind of thing in secondary school? Where you have the best two students. When somebody's tired, he looks at the person who took first last semester. See, I'm not going anywhere. We must read together. 
provoke one another. I'm not teaching you to have a competitive spirit, but you must. Who challenges you? I don't mean makes you envious. Challenges you. I taught the worship team one time. I told them, I said, acknowledge those who are better than you. Hallelujah. Acknowledge it. When you look and say, Selena can hold this camera. If I hold this camera and you watch the video, you will stone me. Hallelujah. I wasn't trained to do it. When they were being trained, I was doing something else. So I'm not that competent. So if I come and see Selena and say, oh, well, is it not this simple thing? Mm -mm. Celebrate greatness when you see it. Hallelujah. You will now see these worship people and say, ah, ah, I thought this lady is a new lady. She came, ah, ah, worship team have accepted her. They are trying. No, why didn't they take you? You see, people have this negative, critical spirit. Hallelujah. Why are the protocol people standing and wearing white? Can't they just dress anyhow? Don't communicate your frustrations looking at things around. Calm down, get the word and change. Let me tell you something. 95% of people who criticize only criticize because they desire to be in that position that they are criticizing. It's a bad spirit in Nigeria. They've been insulting good luck Jonathan and they've been doing a lot of things. People have been swearing, if we see you, kill. he has been in Meduguri and Yola for the past two days. Nobody did anything. Everybody was shouting, hey, the same people. What are we saying? Who is deceiving who? Four, pay the price for new information. You need new information to rise to a new level. You need new information. What you have is good, but it's not enough. Hear me. You are a book writer. You wrote your book. It's only you and your family members that know. That tells you that your information is insufficient. You launched it in your church. They piled the book for you there. Now you are giving it as donation because nobody will buy it. You were not ready. You just followed one foolish motivation that you cannot explain and wrote books that don't have head and sense. Later on, after two years, you read them and saw nonsense that you wrote. Principles that don't work. They are not even work. The best time to begin to bring people into some things is when you become the epistle of your message. At that point, nobody can contend it. If I tell you that spitting on people's face is bringing miracles, I tell you the truth, if I can prove it, you will be surprised to see how people will believe it. There are many people talking things they cannot prove. I learned this early enough. So I made sure that I'm the guinea pig. There are many things today I'm saying. You people are believing it only because you have seen we have become epistles of some of these things to a measure. Otherwise you will not believe it. Pay the price for new information. Get books. Get books. The Bible says, buy the truth. Borrow vessels. You may not borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. Get books. Oh God, Jordan is here. There are books outside, I believe. Buy them. Buy books. Study. Go for knowledge. Respect knowledge. Respect knowledge. Intellect is not everything, but I'm telling you, respect the power of a transformed mind. Respect knowledge. Don't criticize it. Respect knowledge. Go for new information. Meet people who know. Humble yourself. Get tapes. Koinonia messages are here. Many of you have been suffering certain things that the solution has been preached in these messages. Listen to it. Again and again. Sit down with books and tapes and challenge yourself that you are going to change your life. Not just sermons. Books by people who have proven track record. Number five, apply these principles diligently. Apply them. The end of every knowledge is application. Whatever you do not apply cannot help you. 
I'm telling you this. Many of us know so many things, but we refuse to apply them. The most dangerous thing that can happen to a man is to have knowledge without application. There are many people holding all kinds of seminars around Nigeria. Success motivation. And you see the person comes rickety, not motivated, bad, terrible, battered, and he just drops and says, there are three Ds. Determination, dedication, diligence. Look at the person who is talking. Say, you must be determined. This guy is weary already. There were four people who came. He thought 100 people would come. Say, determination, diligence. And the person is already weary. Go back to your secret place. Apply the new information diligently. Number six, be disciplined and consistent in practicing the new principles. Many people lack discipline. It takes discipline to keep practicing these principles. Even if the result is not showing now, you have been tightened. The result is not showing now. You've been reading books that continue, continue, don't stop. Pastor Chris will say, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Let me add to it. Keep doing it. Don't stop doing it. No matter what the, you are praying every day, you are studying your Bible, you are reading books on leadership, you are fine-tuning, you believe that you are going to have one of the biggest catering firm in Nigeria. Now you have certain people who are some of the top caterers. You are following them and you are taking it diligent. You are practicing some principles. It looks like it's not working. Continue. Give yourself wholly to them. I promise you, opportunity will come and your preparation will more than pay for it. Hallelujah. Be consistent. Be disciplined. Many of us are not disciplined. It takes discipline to maintain a consistent prayer life. It takes discipline to maintain a consistent word life. Because sometimes you are tired. Sometimes when is my time to follow materials on leadership and all of these things, I'm tired. I'm really tired. Physically exhausted. I may have spent the whole day counseling. But sometimes when I lie down, I remember that I have people to lead. I think about you. And it inspires me. I get up. Sometimes I literally crawl. I'm telling you with my knees. I put on my laptop. I said, eyes, you can sleep. But my head, stay awake. And I keep following it. I just get a drink or something. And I force myself. Listen, you must let your body know it's not in control of your destiny. Be consistent. Be disciplined. It's your time to study. You are studying a book. Your friend says, come. There's one, there's one uh, powerful program. Or one man of God has come to town. Wonderful. As great as that is. Ask yourself a question. Is the program you are going to, going to help you to achieve your vision? If it will not, you better sit down and continue doing what you are doing. Be consistent. Say, I receive grace to be disciplined. Discipline is doing the same thing whether the condition is favorable or not. That's discipline. Force yourself. Constrain yourself. My body is already used to me. I can come back from a trip. When I come back from a trip, I know that it's time to do some things. I'm tired and I'm exhausted. I rest though. Don't get me wrong. I have days that I pay that debt, but I pay it at the right time. When I need to do something, my body is not going to stop me. There are many of you, you have slept away your destiny. You have slept away a realm that you would have got to. You sleep as if it's a demonic attack. The moment you hold the book, you are drowsy. But when you are gisting, when you are lying, have Number eight, never give up. Never give up give up. We are going to pray right now. Never give up. Never. No matter what happens. 
no matter what happens champions are those who survive what others cannot survive never give up say after me i'll never give up never give up i'm imparting this word in someone's spirit tonight never give up those who succeed in life are those who ride against the odd samson's eyes was removed but he still held on to the pillars he said it's not too late I'm speaking to someone tonight. The devil has spoken to you. Hear me, some of you are outside and you've written certain exams and the devil is telling you your life is over. I bring you a prophetic word. Never give up. I don't care what happened, what, what your CGPA is. I, some of you may have made costly mistakes and you've lost certain things. You were not born again. You slept around. Whatever it is, never give up. You can always start again. Listen. The problem in life is not how fast or slow you are moving. It's that you are not moving at all. That's when it becomes a problem. Because in the ark of Noah, the cheetah entered and the snail too got into the ark. No matter how slow, tell yourself I will continue. Job said, all the days of my appointed time I will wait. For if your strength fails you in the day of battle, the Bible says your strength. I've read the story of CEOs of companies. Oh, you cannot imagine what those people have gone through. I've read the story of preachers that have mega churches. You cannot imagine the persecutions that these men survived. There is nothing you are going through in your life that you cannot conquer if you can keep at it. Many, many of our fathers they would have been successful businessmen today if they did not give up. They started a business together with their friends. On the way, what happened? Maybe the tanker capsized and they lost the foil. And the friend said, I'll continue. Now he owns an oil well and your father is coming to beg him and say, hey, must remember. I want to take you out of the life of a beggar and make you a leader and a champion forever and i curse every pronouncement upon your life i curse every tongue i curse everything that we want to stop you from sharing this word tonight and rising into a glorious destiny i call your spirit into a higher level of grace i call your spirit into a higher level of glory i prophesy and i speak According to the measure of grace that God has granted, you will rise from where you are. In the name of Jesus, academically, I call you, rise above and beyond this level. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Listen, listen. Let me teach you something about the anointing. The anointing introduces possibilities in your life. These are things that were not there. If it's not there, you can't say it's there. It's a lie. Tonight, don't tell lies. There are things that are not in your life but should be there. The agency that will bring it is the anointing. There is favor that should be in your life but it's not in your life. If it's not there, everybody will know. When it comes, we will also know. There were things that were not in my life years ago. When it came, I knew to the degree that brought it. Listen, tonight is the ministry of the spirit. I told you it's the anointing that is responsible for the result. It is the, the it, it said, how shall these things be? What is the dynamics? It said the power of the highest. That's how it happens. It has never changed. It is always an encounter with the anointing. Your, the job of your faith is to connect you to the anointing. It is never faith that moves God. No. Your faith 
connects you to the power of God. Tonight I came with an anointing. There is enough grace. There is enough anointing. I tell you this. There is enough anointing if you will believe. There is enough anointing. Your situation is not the first. Your situation is, the, is not the first. Your family situation is not the greatest. There is nothing new under the sun. God's ability is God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability is working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. It's God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. God's ability. solution to your problem is in the anointing seek an encounter with it when the anointing comes to you that's the answer that's the answer listen listen when the anointing comes your direction that's your answer that's God answering your prayer I'm not talking about falling down I'm talking about an encounter the answer is in the anointing your faith only connects you to the anointing Your life can change in a moment your life can change in a moment God is a prayer answering God he answers prayers by releasing his power he sends his power through his word in the direction where it is needed and received needed and received Make 
Answering God. Shabbat. The prayer answering God. There is a God that answers prayers. Koinonia, He answers prayers with His power. He answers prayers with the anointing. The anointing is answered prayer. The anointing is answered prayer. The anointing, Kato Soto Kata is answered prayers barakoto shoteke telekata the anointing is answered prayer it is by the anointing there is no other way it is by the anointing Please lift your hands. The Lord is going to do a very quick work tonight. I'm hearing people crying in the spirit, and the Holy Ghost is telling me these are those who have been delayed, delayed by the power of darkness. I'm about to release the anointing upon people experiencing delay. Bring them out. I stretch my hands, delay. Come on that judgment. You come on that judgment. Delay, delay. I stretch my hands. All the overflows online. Anyone here, any family under the spirit of delay, bring them out. Sakoto Shabariata. I decree and I declare. I decree and I declare. The fire of God breaking the chains of delay. 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 Bring them out. Wani Kamar the Kay. Papu. Wani Kamar the Kay. Delay over. Over forever. There is an anointing. I told you the anointing is the answer to the prayers. There is an anointing. I'm seeing in this main bowl 16 people. I'm seeing a number 16. Where are they? I stretch my hands. That sword of the spirit breaking delay. There are families with a covenant of delay. A covenant of delay. A covenant of delay. Breaking now. Breaking now. Breaking now. The covenant of delay. Shakatatata. Reketo Kosotoba. The covenant of delay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overflow three, please look at me on the screen. You don't need to bring them here. It's too long a distance. Those inside that building, just look at me on the screen. Because I'm seeing angels moving at overflow three. And I want to pray for you. Overflow three, right now in the name of Jesus. Right where you are. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing the number 24 24 people right at overflow 3 the Lord is breaking delay breaking delay from them breaking delay right now breaking delay hallelujah there are still people listen I want you to believe in what God is doing I want you to have a testimony without an encounter with his power it will just be a religious service i promise you and you will go back it is the power of god the power of god is what draws the line hallelujah delay delay god is not yet done 
where is that family oh lord that nobody has moved forward i'm seeing delay don't worry god is coming in the anointing of the spirit is looking for a family there is a family there is a family there is a family shakato city shabrata skatapa reketa they are here there is a family jesus shokos ketetosia help this woman there is a family this is not just an individual thing there is a family the power of god is searching for a family that the devil has kept 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 so that they will not rise hallelujah we are going to be fast tonight there are many things to do i want you to be sensitive the lord is showing me a vision now and i'm seeing a grave i'm seeing something that looks like a black leather inside that grave and i'm seeing an angel of the lord pull it out and the lord is saying this was done against a family lord where is that family right now i stretch my hands whoever programmed the earth to fight any family tonight is a night of resurrection I declare and declare let it come out now let it come out the breakthrough of that family the healing of that family the miracle of that family I release it now hallelujah hallelujah i'm standing here and i'm looking at this stage one two three four five six seven i'm counting seven stones and the lord is saying these are tight destinies this is the whole destiny of a family seven of them but may the sword of the god i serve in the name of jesus any family tied down by witchcraft any family tied down by ordinances i decree and declare by the blood of jesus liberty tonight liberty tonight hallelujah i'm seeing a family and there are four ladies and all the four ladies have a growth either a breast lump or something in their body four ladies all of them have it in the name of jesus christ wherever this family is regardless of what what overflow i stretch my hands now in the name of jesus christ that family does not need healing that family needs deliverance i command deliverance right now i command deliverance for that family now i command deliverance now when i was praying i saw at least eight women that were barren no child doesn't matter what he is some of them connected to families and the lord told me he was going to open the wombs of every single one of them every single one of them every single one of them please lift your hands i want to pray now i believe in deliverance I really do.
this mama there's serious witchcraft in your family as i'm praying for you now i'm seeing a rope a rope i'm seeing a rope and the lord is saying that i should set this mama free i'm just being fast because i want us to conserve time hallelujah listen do you know why we do not minister deliverance just as a religious thing no it is a way of separating people and the influences that tie them down that's what i want to do now i want to pray listen many of you inside many of you outside are here now because of spirits you may not believe it you may not agree but it's true they are the forces responsible for the pain and the tragedies that we are going through but i want to pray for you now your own is to believe just do what i'm asking you to do we have already prayed if those spirits do not clear out of your life there is no breakthrough you you would have come to waste your time let me tell you the truth it is when those forces leave your life families here spirits have sat on the destinies of families do your worst go to school and come back and meet us get a job and see come back and meet us marry and come back and meet us are we together it's time for them to go lift your hands everyone i want to pray for you now i'm going to command those devils to leave you listen it's not a suggestion they must go they must leave you are we together now i'm praying for you please now because the ushers are doing their best the protocol is doing their best but there is only so much they may not be able to help people there are people outside please be your brother's neighbor if someone is under the anointing and is capsizing to enjoy himself you can do well to help please you can help at least manage the ushers will come for it because this prayer i'm about to pray now is going to bring strange manifestations in people i see a lot of wild spirits wicked ancient spirits all shapes and all sizes they must go now just one instruction i just want you to shout when i ask you the name of jesus once and at the top of your voice now listen don't be surprised when you find out that demons are manifesting through you it doesn't mean you are possessed no that's a different thing altogether some of you as you are here you are representing your family nothing may be wrong with you as a person but because of your family are you ready now lift your hands father in the name of jesus you have anointed this place as a place of fire a place of grace and deliverance there are lives and destinies that have been tied down for ages and in the name of jesus at the sound of my voice may your voice be in my voice may your grace be in my voice i send an alarm to the length and breadth of this place that at the count of three anyone that shouts that name let there be deliverance right now are you ready one two three i command those devils go now go now ancestral spirits spirit husbands spirit wives yokes of darkness i command you by the power of the holy ghost ancient spirits spirits that have been generational familiar spirits i command you now by the anointing of the holy ghost overflow one overflow two overflow three let them go now let them go now
Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm seeing a number of ladies. There are all kinds of spirits manifesting in the night as a man and a woman manifesting as animals in your sleeps and dreams. In the name of Jesus, where are those ladies? Fire is looking for them now. Shakoto Soto Ketiata. Ekelatos Kopriata. I separate you from those spirits. I separate you from those covenants. I separate you from those ordinances. Any man, any woman, any entity appearing to you in the night using the faces of men and animals in the name of Jesus I command by the spirit a severance between you and them hallelujah sir this Baba can I talk to you sir please come God is about to change your story forever I don't know you sir but I want to pray for you stand up please stand up sir i'm looking at you in a vision and i'm seeing you are not alone you came with some people your, your children one one child your son eh? only you no there's a son he's here where is he come come and stand daddy i want to pray for you that this life of hardship god one please stand up please stand up you don't have to kneel down sir this is your dad I want to pray for you. You came believing. Eh? August, is it Augustus? I'm hearing the name Augustus. Augustus. Is it Augustus? Is it Augustus, Augustine, or something? Augustus. Please, if that's your name, let me just talk to you quickly. I want to minimize personal prophecy so that we can do much. We want to pray for the sick. I want to take out time and do an extensive deliverance tonight because there are people that my sister come this lady this one not you you are not a woman my brother this come lift your hands shout over forever in the name of Jesus Christ for you and your family it's over in the name of Jesus Christ sir if you have never believed a man of God in your life what is about to happen to you there is a reason why I asked you to come because the Lord showed me that there was a son and I want to prophesy to you that this life of hardship will end like smoke before the wind. You believe it, sir? Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. It's over right now. I stretch my hands and I decree and declare that it's over. In the name of Jesus. Over forever. Sir, hold my hands. Go and prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go and prosper. By the anointing of the Spirit of God. Go and prosper. Gabriel. Who is Gabriel? Gabriel. I'm hearing the name Gabriel. Please let's hurry up so that we don't waste time. Gabriel. Gabriel. Is he Gabriel? What's your name? Huh? Augustine. Come. You are Gabriel. Why is he here? Augustine. I want to pray for you. Where's your family? My dad is around. My sister. Hold on. There's a man wearing white. Is he your father? White shirt. Yes, Call him. Let him come. Who is that? Who is that? There's somebody. I'm seeing somebody wearing white. What's, please coordinate them. What? You're welcome, sir. Your name is Gabriel, sir. I'm going to pray for you. Please stand here. I want to pray for you. This is the guy wearing white. Come. What is he? My brother. Your brother. Come and stand. God wants to change your life. I don't know you, but I saw someone standing close to you wearing white. That's why I said there's somebody wearing white. Two of you, I want to pray for you. You love Jesus. God is going to change your life. Why is he here? Your name is Gabriel. Too. You too. I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God. Honestly, I tell you, God is visiting families. I don't know if it's because it's 1st October, but I see strange miracles. You, this one, put your hand on your stomach there, right now. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing fire coming on you. 
and the Lord is, I should tell you, he's taking something away from your stomach. That's what is happening right now. In the name of Jesus, I command that thing to go now. My brother, there is oppression. There's a spirit that you need to be delivered from. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Out now of his life and his family. Help two of them. God is delivering them. This is the spirit that is destroying their family. What's your name, sir? Augustine. Augustine. Where's the other Augustine? Okay, you are the one. You are the Augustine. Where are you from? Abia State. Abia State. Yes. I want to pray for you. God wants to give your family a miracle. Do you believe that? Lift your hands. There's bad luck in your life. The Lord is asking me to end it now. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands. I end bad luck. Over. The boy doesn't even believe. As you are standing, the anointing still touch you, but it doesn't have faith. Don't come and stand here and you are wondering. I'm not a herbalist. Have I prayed for you? What's your name? Year two. Year two. What is year two? I'm seeing Y E. Is it Y E T U or year two or year two? Something like that. Year two. Something that has to do with year two. Y E T U. I don't know if it's part of someone's name or something. Year two. Who is that? That's her name. What's her name? Year two. Can you imagine? How can you call somebody's name Year two? You can guess Gabriel, you can guess Mary. But yet, I want to pray. There's something being taken from her life. Hold my hands. And the Lord is saying I should take it away. In the name of Jesus, let it roll like a curtain. And live her life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is of the devil. And I release your wife right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Your miracle has come. Your miracle has come. You love Jesus, my friend. Look at me. You love Jesus. I want to pray for you. Ah. In the name of Jesus. Why is she here? Your dad. There is a copper that I want to pray for. There is a copper. Something is coming on you, my dear. Let me pray for you. Don't worry, if, if, I, if all I do, I, I just lay my hands on you. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Please, why are you here? You are Gabriel? Gabriel, in the name of Jesus Christ, let me pray for this guy. God is giving you favor. Great favor. Great favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's, there's bad luck in your life and your family, but it's going now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's going. That's why you're here. Gabriel. Aleku is there. This is like an idol. Oleku or Aleku. Eh? Aleku. Aleku. Who is that? Eh? Hold on. Where are you from? Aleku. This is something that has to do with a tree. Is there something like that? He said, What? Why are they coming out? What is, why are you? They named somebody after the idol. And the Lord is saying, who, who is the person? Whose name? This is, it's not just an idol. We are going to pray for Benway State. But the, every state has a devil somewhere. I'm saying, this is like somebody's name. Ale, Ale Kuos, Ale something like that. Ale Ku or so. Who is this? Huh? What's that? Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. What's your name? Eh? Grace. Please, can you help us with this mic? The mic, please. Where are you from? Benway. You are from Benway. Yes. The Lord is showing me something. Look at me. If I'm right, say I'm right. If, if it's no, say no. I'm seeing you lying down and you are having a dream. Yes. And in the dream, they are calling this name I've been calling. Yes. Is that true? They call that name three times. One, two, three. That idol. Is that true? Yes. Sir. From that day when you woke up, your life was never the same again. Is that true? Give her the mic now. Let her talk. Yes. Sir. I want to pray for you. Look at me. Hold my hands. If you are from Benway here, hold my hands. Anything, any programming that has been done with any God, you'll be surprised what will happen now. In the name of Jesus Christ, anyone here from Benway whose destiny has been tied to any tree or any devil, right now, I use this lady as a point of contact. As God is touching her, Shakato Totokata. Out of their lives now. Out of their destinies now. Daddy, let me pray for you, sir. This is your first time here? No, sir. I've been coming, sir. You've been coming, sir? Yes. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? Sir? What do you do? I'm a staff of a medical university. I have to pray for you, sir. Because I look at you, and not, not only because I'm looking at you, nobody will look at you and know, but there's serious depression, and I have to pray for you. That's number one. Number two, you have, do you know what they call the cause of hardship? You are not a lazy man, but there is hardship in your life. And the Lord is asking me to help you. Can I pray for you, sir? In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray for this, our daddy. Let there be a miracle right now in his life. I command this yoke of hardship to go. Let it go forever. In the name of Jesus. Let it go forever. Jumai. 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 Is that your name? Uh, well, I'll pray for you, but this is not the person I'm seeing. Jumai. I'll pray for you. Your family is oppressed. There is a spirit that must go now. Bring her. I've not even started praying. Bring her. There is a, a, a wicked spirit that I see in this family. A very wicked spirit that I see in this family. This is something that is older than, older than old. This is hundreds of years old. But in the name of Jesus, I'm praying now. I use you as a point of contact. I command that spirit, you must go now. Hallelujah. Please, just allow me. This is, Jumai, I'll pray for you. But I'm seeing a family. This is like a curse. No matter what the men do, they never rise. The Lord is saying I should break it. Something is happening to a family right now. Let me pray. My sister, this is your first time here. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Don't be afraid. As I pray for you, the Lord is going to open a door in your destiny that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus, I hold your hands now and decree and declare that everything that has tied you down, everything that has tied you down, right now in the name of jesus there is disfavor in your life anybody who plans to bless you something turns them away from you anybody who plans to bless you something turns them away from you i hold your hands and i release you right now in jesus name i want to pray in a hurry there is a family all the men it doesn't matter whether you are hard working whether you go to school or not but the lord is asking me to pray for that family right now lord where are they I'm stretching my hands now and I'm declaring anyone here inside, outside, under the sound of my voice that belongs to this category as I stretch my hands right now I release the power of God to that family right now 
I speak to the men in that family arise now arise now arise now arise now arise now help that woman arise now arise now the men in that family arise now arise now in the name of Jesus There's somebody here you lost your job in the month of March March you lost your job please where is that person you were working but in the month of March I want us to hurry up I, I'm, I'm trying to see that we conserve time the month of March I don't know if you are except if he's a person is far maybe overflow tree then they can just locate him you lost your job there's something you lost your job in the month of March where is that person Please quickly, if there's someone like that. What were you doing? I was a banker. I was a banker. You're a banker? Yes, sir. Something happened. Yes, sir. And they dismissed you. Yes, sir. What are you doing now? I'm doing my PG program for now. Do you believe if I pray for you, you'll get a job? Yes, sir. Will you come and testify? Yes, sir. <laughs> Where? Where have you been praying for? Ah, sorry. Where have you been praying for for a job? Uh, same bank. bank same job. bank. Same bank. You want them to call you back? Yes, sir. Do you believe they can call you back? Sure. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Because you see, I'm looking at something that had to do with money, and truly the guy was innocent. But they just joined people and since there was nobody to stand for him they joined everybody and threw them out but in the name of jesus whatever should not leave you and left you i call it back to your life now i call it back to your life now i call it back to your life now hear me I know many of you may not. Why is he here, sir? Come. Well, stand up, sir. You were outside. Yes, overflow three. Overflow three. Yes. You sir. lost your job. Where were you working? I'm working in hospital. Which hospital? Accountant. Which hospital? Tukutuku Medical Center. So that you see. We don't ask this question because we are prying into your privacy. I hope you are not embarrassed. Sometimes we ask it so that people don't think that this thing, because there are still people with all these things they see, they still believe that maybe someone is playing games. At least this one is not, you are watching it now. Which hospital, sir? Tukutuku Medical Center, Zaria. At uh, Tukutuku. Okay, where are you working now? I'm just, I'm managing with one private school. What do you want God to do for you? Just to get back the job back to that place. no 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 another job sir another job yes. do you believe if i pray for you god will give you a job i believe that do you know why i'm prophesying to you in the open so that you will testify in the open too what's your name sir i'm paul paul yes sir god will give you a job eh? amen the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord listen so when it has to do things there we don't legislate we make petitions but the earth has he given to the sons of men i give you a job now in the name of jesus christ i prophesy it in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus he will go and return with you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the lord um how many of us are trusting god for healing miracles or came with loved ones that are really sick Okay, we have a lot to do. So what will happen is, we'll take a break now to minister very quickly to the sick. And then after that, I'm still going to minister to people shortly before we do the final prayer. Will that be okay? Now, but while we are doing that, please, no laziness. There will be prayer points. Are we together? There will be prayer points. Once the prayer point comes, pray. Because in that prayer point, you will receive your miracle. Praise the Lord. But don't sit down yet. I'm, I'm not walking around, but I just want to. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord directing me to someone. There is, there is something that we must settle here. 
I'm seeing an anointing going around this place. I'm seeing an anointing going around this area. There is oppression over someone's destiny. That's the lady in the name of Jesus. I command that devil to go now. You must let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring her out. There's no space here, right? Please, don't push them. Don't push them. We are coming back. Just take her out to wait for me. Mama, what do you want God to do for you? Kina de chuo, chuo nkafa. To mama mu fara do akije ki jirani agabako. Zam make ya do. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Let it be over now. That oppression. Let it be over by the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is where I'm coming to. In the name of Jesus. Hold on. Hold on. In the name of Jesus. I saw light moving across here. And God wants to visit a family right now. Three of them. One, two, three. Where are they? Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the visitation come now. No hiding. The Lord must touch them. That's why you came. The Lord must touch you. Casting crowds. Lifting hands. Bowing hearts. That's all we come to do. Let her go now. Casting crowds. Out. Lifting hands. It's all we come to do in your name. We will rise. I don't know. You ain't no high. In your name, in your name, we will rise. I don't know. I don't know. You ain't no at me that girl look at me shout Jesus something is tying you let it lose you now I stretch my hands to you let it be over now hallelujah now please for those of you coming here for the first time we take our time we you see that we don't announce instant miracles except because we don't have the time our time is very limited praise the lord now this is what we are going to do um while i give you the prayer request please listen carefully those please listen carefully i want to pray particularly particularly no matter what overflow you are in if you are trusting god for the fruit of the womb don't come now but when it's time to come i want you to come i want to pray for you by myself but any other issue those inside i want you to come stand here and then parts of overflow two maybe half of overflow two can join them now overflow one please you go to your projector stand overflow two and those spilling over at the roadside you can move to the projector stand overflow three if God grants grace and there's time, I will just run and come and visit you briefly just to let you know we are together. Overflow 3, move to your projector stand. Hallelujah. And we are going to pray very quickly. Please, if they don't prophesy to you or they don't minister to you, don't worry. We have to pray quickly so that I will focus and do other things. I want everybody to receive. Will that be fine? But those who are trusting God for fruit of the womb, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, wherever, I like you to please come those online doesn't matter any nation those following us online doesn't matter your nation you're trusting God for a miracle I want you to connect right now by faith hallelujah so we're going to do three things at the same time number one you're going to be submitting your prayer request to the ushers number two you're going to be praying the prayers that I'll give you we're preparing our faith and then number three will come out is that all right praise the Lord so let's do that very quickly very quickly please you are trusting God or you came with a sick person now is your time to come out please quickly 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 Jesus we bless you I don't know you reign on casting crowds lifting hands Bowing hearts, what 
we've come to do Casting rods We are lifting hands Bowing hearts It's what we've come to do It's in your name We will rise I don't In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave her now. Leave her now. In the name of Jesus. Can you lay your hands on her, Jimmy? Just on her chest or anywhere. Just touch her there. In the name of Jesus, I decree. I curse that spirit. You go and you go forever. In the name of Jesus. Now this is what will happen. Please, we are going to be very fast. We have to be fast. You see that there are lots of people. Uh, our miracle services. If you came with someone, uh, just be patient. We are going to attend to them. Praise the Lord. Thank God we have, uh, we have many hands. And by the grace of God, we will coordinate. We will make it very fast. Ushers, please be collecting the prayer requests. If your loved ones are yet to send their own, send them a text quickly. And she can join the queue. Just keep them somewhere. I'm going to lay my hands on them. Praise the Lord. How many overflows do we have? There's an extra overflow I see by the road. It has spilled over. Maybe overflow four. You can, uh, let's see. We have to be fast. Praise the Lord. Okay, this is what will happen. Um, Pastor Jimmy will be at the overflow outside here. Pastor Alpha, you'll be at the overflow here. Benga, you would go to overflow three. Uh, is there someone outside here? Who is outside here? Pastor Alpha is outside. Um, promise. Promise you will be here with Pastor Alpha. And then um, Pastor Femi, you'll be with um, you'll be with Benga right there at the overflow. Inside here, I don't know how many people are left. And, by God's grace, God will grant us grace and we'll have a lot more people to be able to minister. Okay, Kenny. Kenny, join join um, a Jimmy. You join a Jimmy there. I think that's that's all right so far. Let's let's just trust God for grace. Father, we agree in the name of Jesus Christ that for everyone we are praying for, it doesn't matter who lays hands on them, let there be miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be miracles. The devil is a liar. Let there be miracles. In the name of Jesus. Put your hand on your stomach, my dear. I want to remove something from your body now. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit. That devilish spirit. Father, let there be miracles. In Jesus' name. Please, let's go very quickly. We will need more hands. I don't know if we still have people. I know they may. Aaron, what if you are not doing anything? Please, if you can help out in Overflow 3 with them so that at least we can help to coordinate things there. Praise the Lord. Father, let there be an avalanche of miracles here right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please worship him. You are going to give us, we are going to pray one prayer first. I'd like you to decree and declare and say, Father, I prophesy over myself that my miracle locates me now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Father, we give you all the praise. The one only you know how to do Come and change my story Give me a testimony The one only you know how to do Can I hear you say the one only you know The one only you know how to do Can you lift up a voice and say do what only you do know. What only you know how to do. Hey, yeah. come and change, come and change the story. Give me a testimony. Give me a testimony. Do what only you know. Do 
You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Mighty in this place. Are we done? Are all the requests here, please? In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I bow my knees before the God of my covenant and I decree and declare that every request placed here. I turn it to a testimony now. I turn it to a testimony now. Strange testimonies now. Strange testimonies now. Lord, I cry that you step in and do impossible miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, let me tell you. There are things written here. That except the writer, if you read it, you won't even believe that it can happen. But I pray, the God who has the all-seeing eye, that can see every request, a representation of every man's pain here, I call on that God, answer by fire. Answer by fire. Father, there are issues here that are impossible with men. Some of them have deadlines that cannot be achieved humanly. But in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I prophesy, let there be strange miracles. Strange miracles now. For all those connecting from whatever nation, in the name of Jesus, we agree with you here. The same fire that is on this altar, through the internet, to your various localities, you receive the same testimony in the name of Jesus. Every human agent that must partner with God for this request to be granted, we force them from their hiding places to appear now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever must die for this request to be answered. In the name of Jesus, the ground opens and swallows them. Whoever must lack sleep for this request to be granted, we seize their peace and their sleep now. Hear me? Any mortal man that says over his dead body for you to testify, may God answer their prayers this night. The Lord is opening my eyes. I know they are still ministering outside. Let's be patient. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing trees. I'm seeing trees in the realm of the spirit. And I'm seeing these trees. It's like a representation of families. Hold on please. I'm seeing these trees like a representation of families. And I'm looking at it. I've never seen a tree bringing out blood, human blood. But in this vision, I'm seeing a tree, but I'm seeing human blood. This is like a representation of families. I decree and declare. 
I don't know what family the devil is taking advantage of, but I want to pray now. I'm not prophesying. I'm speaking for, for God to locate a family that must not go back this night in this situation. Lord, I decree and declare wherever that family is, right now in the name of Jesus, may the fire of God locate that family now. May the fire of God locate that family now. The Lord is releasing an anointing. Hold on. Over people is for supernatural clarity and direction. That's what I hear. Receive it now. People are receiving it. People are receiving it. I prophesy. Clarity, clarity. God is answering questions now by the anointing. If that fire comes on you, you are receiving direction right now. Clarity, clarity. All the overflows, clarity. I release that anointing right now. God is giving clarity. Listen, I'm still praying it. I'm seeing anointings that will translate as answers. Should I stay here or should I relocate somewhere else? Should I start the project or should I stop? Every confusion and anointing is answering it now. An anointing is answering it now. An anointing is answering it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm praying for everybody, but I'm seeing particularly overflow one. An anointing for divine recovery. Divine recovery. Let me tell you something. Whatever leaves you can come back to your life. Are you hearing now? There are people who have lost things. I'm about to call it into your life now. And as that anointing comes on you, just know that it's your time of recovery. Lord, where are they? Where are those who have lost things that need recovery? Shakata kata kata. Shakata kata kata. Broskete kata. Everywhere, everywhere. Everywhere. Inside, outside, outside. The grace for recovery. The grace for recovery. I release that grace now over individuals and over families over individuals and over families individuals who have lost things lost things lost opportunities lost opportunities somebody is recovering an opportunity somebody is recovering something that left you hallelujah the angel of the lord is leading me here there are at least four people this grace for recovery must come upon you i'm seeing at least four people something you have lost is about to look for you something you have lost must look for you i force it to look for you by the power of the holy ghost hallelujah listen let me tell you I told you God answers you by bringing the anointing in your direction. That collision with the anointing is what will program your testimony. And all of a sudden you will see strange testimonies happening to you. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a strong man in four families that God is clearing out of the way. Listen. Listen. I don't say things like this lightly, but I'm seeing at least I'm seeing two women and two men who have sat for long on the destinies of people. They don't even know they are the ones. Where are they? Shakatos keta, brakatos kakatekatos, inside and outside. Whoever, in the name of Jesus, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, any man sitting on anybody's destiny here, you want to rise, but they stop you. You want to move, but they sit on your glory. I clear them out of the way now. Listen, you should attend a miracle service like this and know that you attended a miracle service. Like this mama, you see that? The devil wants to kill this woman with cancer. 
eat her into pieces with cancer and destroy her your mother you are the ones who brought her hold the mother and two of you come you two of you need deliverance first leave mama come come and stand someone should hold or get a seat for mama to sit i've prayed for her but i'm looking i'm this is this your mother two of you i want to pray for you eh what you need i know you brought your mother to be healed of cancer but for you god must heal you first you will need deliverance eh i'm not saying you are witches but i have to pray for you this is the instruction god is giving me father in the name of jesus you will not allow these ladies to go down the way of trouble and sorrow and pain and discouragement therefore i lay my hands on you in the name of jesus fire over every wicked devil in the name of jesus you came to stand in for your mother but satan has his own plan for you in the name of jesus Kai. wickedness is real i held these ladies and the lord showed me a vision i'm seeing a man a real herbalist sitting down on the ground and i'm seeing something that looks like a pot they are writing names of people with blood blood not chalk they will write it and throw it inside the pot write it and throw it this is an Igbo family write it throw it inside the pot lord i don't know why you showed me this vision but in the name of jesus i don't care where the family is but in the name of first my first prayer point is that that herbalist must die first in the name of jesus christ if you don't like the prayer point say amen to the one you believe but my first prayer point is that the wicked herbalist this is someone's destiny these people are here oh, i'm praying you may not even know you are the one i say it again whoever is that man on the ground writing whose name whether it's your marital destiny whether it's your breakthrough in the name of jesus let the earth open and swallow that wicked man who say now who say now who say now who is that please let her come please quickly you are who say now what's your name huh? who say now i want to pray for you eh? i'll pray for two of you but you are the one i want to pray for what's your name from where what state are you from FCT. you are from fct do you believe in favor shout it no you are not shouting you have shout favor. in the name of jesus christ i'm looking at you and i'm seeing a lot of bad luck for you and your family and this is what god is bringing for you favor who say now i want to pray for you you are who say now to madam please come you too is it mother and daughter or you are coming by yourself you are, you are who say now to i'll pray for you but this is the lady I want to speak to. You love Jesus with all your heart. I want to pray for you. God is bringing a major breakthrough for you and your family. Major breakthrough. I lay my hands right now and I command, let it happen right now. In the name of Jesus. Where are you from, my dear? Jalingo. Taraba. In the name of Jesus. The Lord gives you a miracle. Now. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Every bad luck must live your life now. Eh? Every bad luck must live your life. I lay my hands and I command that spirit to go. This lady, only bad things look for her. There are people like that. When good things come, they just turn. There is a spirit that turns it away. Everybody is getting a job. Something that is simple. When is your turn? Let me tell you something. Hardship is not poverty. Hardship is a spirit you get things but something you can get for two weeks will take you four years it's hardship it's a cause are you hearing what i'm saying now you can't go give god glory under that kind of condition simple things 
you ask somebody out i want to marry you they answer you after four years it's a cause are you are you a demon it's a cause you start a building project you finish after 10 years it's not a blessing a hard life is worse than poverty this is what the devil has put on the life of this lady i i take it away now in the name of jesus and i use her as a point of contact if there is anything on anyone's head that is responsible for bad luck happening in the name of jesus i command whatever it is let the fire of god come upon it now let me pray for you man in the name of jesus i lay my hands upon you and i release favor in the name of jesus favor i'm seeing someone you are into printing please let's hurry up we have to stop a few minutes now so that you are into printing you print like um, posters whatever it is you design you print banners please who is that person i want to pray for you You are into printing. Uh, I will pray for you, but the person I'm seeing, I'm not saying if you want to do it, if you are currently doing it, you are into it. For how long? Since my, my child was up. I was born into printing. Your father is a printer? Yes, sir. Where do you do it? Mina. Mina. Yes, sir. From Mina, you came here? I'm serving in Kagzara. In because the person I'm seeing is about to lose a lot of money. This is a contract or project that someone will give you. You will suffer and do it and something will happen and destroy that whole job. And the person will say you must pay. And it's going to cost you hundreds. I don't know. Well, it may not be so much money to you, but I'm seeing something. Losses of at least this is a very big project that the person is even angry. I'm seeing something that even has to do with police. Because the person will say that you went and gave the job. All of you are into printing. What are you printing? I need to print it. What printing? Books, everything in every press. Books. You yes. too? Your dad. All of you. I'll pray for you. You are standing for somebody. We have to avert this. This time of recession is not the best time to get into trouble with police. Say amen. amen. We want to stop it now. So that whether it's your fault or not, when you're in trouble, you're in trouble. And you see, the way the devourer works is that he will wait just when I'm, I'm soon going to do that prayer. Where things work, just when the miracle is about to happen, something happens and destroys your life. I have to pray for you. Where is your dad? Huh? He stays in Abuja. He stays in Abuja. That's where you stay too? Yes. What's your name? Peace. Peace. I want to pray so that we'll stop trouble, eh? In the name of Jesus. Daddy, we use your daughter as a point of contact to pray. Every trouble we avert now. You two, you are into the printing. Where? Abu Press. Press. Yes. Sir. You work with Abu Press. Yes. Uh, you work there now. It's not your own. Okay, but I will still pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Grace. The one for Mina. I release you. Eh? Can I pray for businesses? Can I speak over businesses? Huh? You are into printing? Uh, what's your name? Hassan. Hassan. You, you, you need to... Um, well, I don't mean to embarrass you, but you are very shabby. Huh? You need to organize your life. You're a smart young man, but you see how you are looking like uh, a thief. You'll be smart when you are coming to the house of God. Listen, when you, people are, when you are coming to the house of God, don't embarrass him. This is a family but you look smart. You don't dress, you see, no shoes, your hair is scattered, not combed. You look smart. Eh? You are my friend. I want you, it will be difficult for you to progress in life like this. It will be difficult for you to get a good wife like this. It will be difficult for you to get many good things. Appearance is the seed for acceptance. Don't say it doesn't matter. Dress well. The house... Jesus.
Jesus. May the Lord help you right now. Lord, organize his life in the name of Jesus Christ. Organize his destiny. There is a spirit of excellence. Excellence is a spirit. You receive it in Jesus' name. I'll quickly pray for you. Doesn't matter where you're standing. You, you are into printing too. You too. In the name of Jesus, all those into printing, I lay my hands, Pastor Lawrence, grace for you. You will do well. You will get jobs in Jesus' name. There are some of us, what we need now, we are at a point in our lives where humanly speaking, we have paid our price. What you need is favor. And we're going to pray it. Is that true? Are there people like that here? There are others you have not paid your price. Paying for favor is putting you into trouble. What I need to pray for you for is grace not to be lazy. Laziness is also a spirit. Many of us don't know. It takes a lot of laziness. Um, something is leaving you. That devil must go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You want to print in two? In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is somebody you so close. You are a serious tailor. But for a long time, this is from April. Everything just went down. I don't mean gradually down like this. It's almost as if, please, who is that person? You are a tailor. You sew clothes. You are a serious tailor, but something just happened. I'm seeing the month of April, and everything just went down. You are the one? You sew clothes. Where? Yango. Who knows you? If you are a serious tailor, they should know you here. Who are who, you? have sewn people's clothes here? Zango. Okay, Zango. Yes. There's a shop. I'm what ha then what happened? There's a shop. I'm working for somebody. So last month he sent me out and closed the shop for no reason. Last month. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll pray for you. If you did something wrong and they pursued you, when you come here, you ask for mercy. You don't complain. Even if it's my shop and you don't do well, I will drive you. Everybody wants to succeed. So let's let's be very honest when we are before God. Praise God. When you are before God, if you tell the truth, that's even what will provoke his mercy. You understand? If, you, if, if I employ you, don't be embarrassed, my dear, but if I employ you and you are not bringing me anything and I'm paying you, why won't I downsize and drive you? So don't make it look as if because this person you are saying drove you. I'm not seeing the person as a wicked person. No. Something happened and it's your fault. Eh? You need the mercy of God and God will help you. Don't make it, you see that, if, if it's not revelation now, you will now blame someone else and say that person is wicked. My prayer for you is that God will bless you too. Huh? But please, don't be angry. I'm not seeing that person. That person did exactly what I would have done. Hmm? Father, in the name of Jesus, show your daughter mercy. If you need mastery, may God improve your skill. May God improve your value. And I pray for you in Jesus' name. God will not leave you hungry. The God we serve will change your story tonight. In the name of Jesus, you experience his mercy, you experience his grace. Madam, you're a tailor. Where? Samaru Market. Samaru. Market. You have your shop? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Yes, sir. You're a good woman, but you are always entering trouble with those you sold their clothes. You don't used to finish on time. Madam, I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is showing me. Don't be embarrassed. This is a family. It may just need... You are a very good tailor. I'm not, I'm not against you. Don't feel bad. And there's some people. That's what I'm seeing now. Yes, and there's problem now. They are even angry. Yes, sir. Because they are supposed to sow something for them for an occasion. Uh, and you didn't finish. And now the person is really angry. So these are some of the things we are talking about. As God steps in, let's allow his mercy. Just tell them sorry. Because you, I want, you would have been far more than you are now. But there is a spirit of delay sitting on your glory. Hold my hands. He must go now. To draw from you again, again, we've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Listen, I want you to mark this woman. The kind of favor this woman will enter into from this night will surprise you.
I'm saying it in the open. The Lord will give you favor. You are a tailor. Why are you just coming, my brother? We are praying for people here. Father, in the name of Jesus, help our brother to succeed. It's unbelief. If God is calling a case to help people, huh? you come out proudly. You don't stand there, you are ashamed. You understand? It's an act. It's You are a student and you are doing it. Give people to your tailors. See, the tailors are now coming out. We'll pray for your business. Please, all tailors, do a good job. We believe in excellence. Don't say, I'm praying for you publicly. It's not just endorsing you to destroy people's clothes. Do a good job. Praise the Lord. Do a good job and we'll pray for you. There are too many people here. Two people. School of Ministry wants to do their graduation gown. In two weeks, we are graduating our students, 243 students. Imagine that you get the contract to do their gown. If you do a good work, God will honor you. If you do a nonsense work, people will not endorse you just because it's the house of God. Praise the Lord. My brother, you want to study? Where? I'm a student. Oh, you are a student? Yes. Be okay. okay. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord grant you grace. God will raise help for you. In the name of Jesus, God will raise help for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are a tailor. In the name of Jesus, God will raise help for you. You need deliverance. I command the spirit. Hi. This lady has oppression in your dream. I set you free right now in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God. You didn't come out for tailor. You came out by the mercies of God. You see what I'm saying? This is the tailor now. You see what? Let me pray for her, please. I see a wild animal. I'm looking at this lady and I'm seeing. Kai. Lord Jesus, mercy. I command every legal access Satan has over you. When this lady gets angry, she can swallow you. It's not her fault, it's a spirit. Be free now. Look how many people are holding one lady. In the name of Jesus, I set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me advise you. If you want to enter a relationship, pray. If you want to marry, pray. You listen to what I'm telling you. You see, the body of Christ, we don't listen. And we do. I'm not saying this lady is a witch. Please don't get me wrong. But I'm saying you should pray. Now, I'm not condemning her. But imagine that you're in a relationship with this lady. And you married last week. You see this? If this lady is angry, that spirit will manifest. No matter how strong you are, she will beat the living daylight out of you. When that spirit leaves her, she will tell you sorry. And then it will come back. This is what God is helping us to solve. Are we together? Now imagine you are a customer and just because you gave her 10,000, you insulted her. When that spirit rises, she will tear your clothes or beat you. Lord Jesus, we invoke your mercy upon her. In Jesus' name. Madam, you're a tailor too? Where? Judge. Judge. I'll pray for you. You're a tailor too? Where? You're in Nazareth State. In the name of Jesus, may God increase you. I speak to your business. Let it increase. Experience increase. Delay lives your life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you're in business, please lift your hands. I want to speak over your life. Please believe the prayer I'm praying for you. There is an anointing that makes people prosper. Why are you here? You are tailors. You are all tailors. What do you mean you are tailors? This gentleman, you are a tailor too? Okay, please come. You would have come out since, so that our time, you know, our time. You are all tailors. You are a tailor too? I hope we all know that this is the house of God. Please, don't, don't tell lies. If you are not a tailor here, I'm, the prayer will reach everybody. If you are not into tailoring, please don't embarrass yourself. If you are into tailoring, leave them, leave them, please. Provided you are, I don't know what is this with God and tailors, but let's pray because God wants to increase you. You look like a tailor. 
You see, some of you don't look like tailors. You are, you, are not, you are not dressing like tailors. This gentleman is sharp and smart. He looks like a tailor. Ejimi teaches that you represent your brand. If you are a man of God, you show it by the anointing. If you are a tailor, if you are a public speaker, you show it by accuracy of communication. If you are a tailor, you are marketing your products at all times. You don't say, come to my shop. No. If I cannot see your tailoring prowess on you, then I shouldn't patronize you. Father, change the lives of these great people of ours. I'm just going to lay my hands and touch your head. And in the name of Jesus, I pray. May your business step into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. As I lay my hands, please go back to your seat. In Jesus' name. That yoke leaves you now. In the name of Jesus. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Go and increase. Go and multiply, my dear. Go and increase. Go and multiply. Increase, madam. Multiply. Go and increase. Go and multiply. Go and multiply. Go and increase. Go and multiply. Go and increase. Go and multiply. Go and increase. Whether you're a tailor or not, after this people don't come out again. Go and multiply. Go and multiply. In the name of Jesus. Go and multiply. Go and multiply. In Jesus' name. If you're in business, please. Any kind of good, godly business, lift your hands. If you're in a bad business, repent. And do something honorable. Listen. Let me mention an example of bad business. Any business that has to do with smuggling drugs. You are a thief. You are not in business. You stop it. I don't care whether you are helping young guys around Samaru connect with a snuff. That's not a business. Are we together? There are businesses that are demonic. Writing exams for people. Writing jam for people. Writing, I will never pray for you for increase. That's not a godly business. Business that has to do with you having an affair with somebody's husband, somebody's wife. It's not a good business. Prostitution, not a good business. Dirty business that has to do with ungodly things. No, no, sir. Let's be very sincere before God. But I pray sincerely from the depth of my heart. The power to prosper. The grace that can come on a business and turn it around overnight. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Listen, please, I want you to be childlike enough and believe this prayer I'm praying for you. And watch what God does. Some of you, you don't have any clients, you don't have any customers. Some of you overnight, just by this prayer, by miracle service October, it will be like a dream. I prophesy to you. Some of you, you have the ideas, what you need is capital. I declare, let somebody rise up who is willing to help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you, what you need is an endorsement of someone credible in your field. So that it will open doors for you. May someone who has gone ahead of you accredit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you are trying to sell properties. There's nobody to buy. But if someone comes to buy it, God will use it to honor you. I call somebody to buy it now. In the name of Jesus. Now I prophesy favor on everyone. I decree and declare tonight the main auditorium overflow one two three those following online the kind of favor you have never seen in your life may my God make it happen in your life now receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus Esther the village girl became Esther the queen through favor Ruth the hungry woman who was about to die became Ruth the wife of Boaz I don't know who I'm prophesying to but the favor that would change your story in one month I release it to you right now 
I release it to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ help that woman there please there are people from January till now you have never testified it's not that you don't want to come out but nothing has happened I stand before the God of heaven and I decree and declare may my God do something in your life that will force you to come and testify in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare I don't know what door has closed between you and your next level you have been knocking for a long time and that door has refused to open I open that door for you right now I open that door for you right now any terminal disease ravaging anyone's body you get healed right now two weeks you are back again you get healed three weeks you are back again I set you free right now help that I set you free right now in the name of Jesus Christ the only thing you know that happens in your family is fight and quarrel no love no joy when someone is about to rise a troublemaker comes I declare may the Prince of Peace may the Prince of Peace step into our homes now step into our families now you are beautiful you love God you are a well-mannered lady no husband I'm led to pray this prayer you don't hear me pray it all the time but I decree and declare every lady here ready for a relationship a godly one I call your husband to your life now every gentleman who wants to marry but no job no money the devil is you <laughs> the devil is using lack of finances to rubbish your life in the name of Jesus the God that can lift a man from a dunghill may that God lift our brothers here right now any project you started this year that you were hoping to have completed by now and as it is you need a miracle I release the finishers anointing upon you in the name of Jesus Christ all those writing exams shakatos prati alakatos in the name of Jesus the grace to not only write your exams but to finish well I release it upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ all our, our brothers and sisters who travel from several places to write post you and me in the name of Jesus we give you admission here I don't care who you know or who you don't know we give you admission here now hallelujah school of ministry students are writing their exams by nine o'clock tomorrow in the name of Jesus grace for retention receive it there are other people writing promotion exams others there are, we have a lot of postgraduate students doing their PhD work research you know their thesis whatever it is anything that has refused to come to completion in your life I, re I release upon you grace for completion in the name of Jesus the last prayer point and we are done give me two minutes I need to pray for our spiritual lives some of you started well with God but right now you need prayers you need serious prayers prayer zero fasting zero word life zero passion for the things of God zero you are not bad but in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. The fire. The Bible says the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. The fire that must come upon the candle of your destiny. 
Sokoto Pakata. From the main hall here, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. Take a fresh fire for your work with God. Take a fresh fire for your work with God. Hear me? Some of you, the moment you open your Bible, it's as if something happens and you close it back. It's not normal. I decree and declare passion for the word of God. Receive it right now. Some of you used to pray seriously. You even used to attend the, the weekly prayer department meeting. But things happen. You were offended with God and several things happen in your life and you say, I'm, I've been praying but I've not seen results. And you stop. I release upon you grace to go back. Grace to go back to the prayer altar. Grace to go back to the prayer altar. Grace to go back to the prayer altar. Hear me? Those of you who, as you are seeking money, you are forgetting God. As you are seeking marriage, you are forgetting God. It's not that you want to do so. Life is pushing you away from God. Whatever is drawing you away from God, I cause that thing now. Listen, we are rounding up. God and prosperity can go hand in hand. God and marriage can go hand in hand. Whatever must make you leave God to get it is of the devil. May it live your life forever. Now keep your hands lifted. The last prayer point. God is looking for men and women of the spirit. Simple one minute prayers that will change your life now. Lift your hands. I want to pray for something to come upon these hands. Listen. Mm. there must be an evidence if you belong to this ministry this is a supernatural ministry this is a ministry of signs wonders diverse manifestations i will not end this meeting without this impartation i'm praying now at the count of three let an unction let an ancient mantle land on someone's hand one two three Take it now. Healing anointing. Take it now. Prophetic mantle. Take it now. Grace for signs and wonders. Receive it. May your hands become healing hands. May your hands become miracle hands. Deliverance hands. Favor hands. hear me the grace to win souls like never before i know it's old school i'm both old and new school depending on the one that does not work soul winning is never old school the bible says he that winneth souls is wise i pray for you grace for a dimension evangelism through signs and wonders receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now the last prayer for you the mantle of honor the grace that distinguishes a man above his contemporaries i lay my hands on my head and i prophesy to you carry that anointing right now carry that anointing right now experience strange levels of honor in the name of jesus father we give you all the praise every expectation you brought here whether i mentioned it or not i'm agreeing with you now within 24 hours let your miracle start Within 24 hours, let your miracle start. Those of you who came from far, before you get to where you came from, you will collide with miracle after miracle. Testimony after testimony. Hallelujah. 
if there is anyone here in ministry a man of god a woman of god you have a fellowship you have a church i pray for you the fire that is here carry it back to your church carry it back to your fellowship carry it back to your place of ministry in the name of jesus christ hallelujah wave your hands and give jesus praise thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus hallelujah everyone keep standing you are here our time is gone everyone please stand you are here you are worshiping with us for the first time overflow one overflow two and inside this is your first time please make your way here overflow three just make your way to the front of your projector stand and look at me let's honor them koinonia quickly <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord please keep standing two minutes we are done let's honor them they are coming may god bless all of you who continually invite people to come listen let me tell you one truth i am very honored to have the privilege to lead this campaign of bringing the reality of the power and the presence of god to people when you invite people you don't necessarily make a ministry bigger yes you increase them in numerical strength but the truth about it is that you are giving people an opportunity to have encounters hallelujah for all of you who take out time to invite people may the god i serve bless you clear the way for them as they come hallelujah hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you